All right. So. <sighs> oh, good. It'll be <laughs> nine o'clock <laughs> before we actually start playing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Row time to recover some more. <laughs> so, um, <sighs> initially, after you guys had gotten back from uh, Vanguard back to Leona, uh, you learned a few things. Uh, for for uh, so you learned that Evelyn was the one who caused uh, the comet to fall into Vanguard. She was attempting to break off the feeding tube that would eventually get to uh, Thelenik, um after she had discovered, or it was revealed that Thelenik was portraying Maruks and masquerading as their prophet in order for them to build him a new body, which worked out terrifically until he started eating people's emotions and then he started going crazy because he hasn't eat he had eaten in a long time and then he started binging on cultists because that was the closest thing he had there's a lot to unpack in just that mm. sentence alone <laughs> we've all been there really we've, we've all know. been there he was very hangry and then he became <laughs> very... he was absolutely curious stop it <laughs> <laughs> the new season of uh, The Dragon Prince is coming next week, by the way, guys. Oh, well, I'm, I'm excited. excited. Nice. Okay. But after, then we learned all that. But uh, then we had time skip uh, during rains, time skip. You know, she worked on a garden, worked on a poison grotto with some help from some druids, made a magic sleeping bag for Zaitari, crafted many potions. Got her ass kicked by Melanie a few times. <laughs> um, had Hellfire upgraded. I spelled Hell Hellfire wrong. And then near the end of the break, uh, Rain took a trip to obtain some rare seeds, which didn't turn out to turn it out that, that turned <clears throat> out to be a bust. And then later on, um, once she had posted the job for the garden and the poison grotto, uh, an old familiar face showed up, uh, Marla asking rain for a position at the keep and after going through a rough interview process was granted said position um zaitari met with her divorce lawyer and they ironed out the details uh, of what she would have to accomplish to divorce her husband if he was alive or dead so she worked on that, worked on the tavern, got some decor made, got some stunning stuff, then mounted, uh, interviewed Mr. Wern uh, Fiddletook for the position of bartender, um, who came with an alehouse drag, uh, drake named Philip. Uh, they were hired, uh, some ta cats were taken in, uh, meddling Cal, and some research on the Eye of Crassus uh, yielded one line... Um, which it was, it was Krasos that murdered the goddess Tam uh, Tamara, his fellow Einfeldir comrade, in order to ascend and become the Avatar of Blood. Um, so that was not ominous at all. Don't the, like that. Yeah. The, she also arranged for the Wandering Moon to play at Tilda's reception. Uh, this is also around the time when Elena informed her that a attempt had been made on Tegan's life by his younger brother Earl. So Zatari, Elena, and Tegan headed to Dighton to deal with Earl and turned out he was possessed by a demon or had made a deal with a demon for power and then did all these horrible things and then they decided to uh, make imprison him um, and oh my god <laughs> They decided yes. to imprison him, and he's not, he was tried and uh, imprisoned for his crimes, and Penelope is currently the head of uh, the family. Melanie was offered knighthood uh, by Theo and Tilda, uh, she, which she accepted, changed her last name, was sent to charm school, uh, tutored in politics and history and pretty much crammed six years of learning in six months um, she had some amulets made uh, gave, gave them to Bernard's family 
Uh, and at Tilda's reception, after a hilarious ceremony, was given the title Sir Melanie <laughs> Tovin of Rosewater Keep. Tilda, yes. <laughs> with Alexandria and Nenrine's help, uh, learned that Procusium is actually calcified Old One's blood. Uh, sleep Storm was Yay. Sleep Storm. I put Sleep Store. It should be Sleep Storm. <laughs> don't know why it all, well, I wrote that. I was copying their spell book. Um, Rosemond and Francois were chosen as people of honor for their respective wedding parties. Mm -hmm. uh, while researching, uh, she, you know, you planned for the wedding. Uh, Ice Queen yeah. was uh, contacted to perform at the ceremony, uh, which she accepted. And Maggie was asked to perform the ceremony, which she accepted. And some training with Princess Alyssa took place. Uh, yep. Later, uh, Theo and Tilda married at a small temple. Um, and before the large wedding occurred, Tilda's father actually visited, apologizing for being a crappy dad. Uh, yeah. Primrose showed up, gifted the married couple with a pair of bracelets she crafted, and then they went on their honeymoon at Indyton. Yep. Uh, bittersweet assisted the new... F Foreman Wayland Magneto uh, for constructing the keep. Uh, Melanie bought some new clothes uh, for her them, and spent a lot of time in the Zen Garden uh, after being taught <laughs> at charm school. Question. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Um, and then at the end of six months. Elena visited and asked again, yeah, again, and asked, you know, for some help with an issue with a children cult called the Fireplace, uh, currently stationed uh, on the Leonin side of the Sea of Gadar. And mm -hmm. you guys agreed to help. <laughs> that is directly in Galantara <laughs> Duchy territory. This fucker didn't know who he was messing with. I have a question. La yes. Uh, Tilda's last name. Mm -hmm. Is it hyphened? Or is it... Or is, did you just add loyal at the end of it? Um, so now it's uh, Matilda Persephone Adelaide Bernadine Loyola Ni Galantra. Oh my god, it got longer. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was really hoping I could break out and like surprise all of you with, but okay, this is fine too. <laughs> you want to hear the natural. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, so you guys, when did you guys want to head out? It's going to take you from Rose Runner Camp. Sorry, I burped. Uh, you guys are there. How dare you. Yes. How dare you have gas. <laughs> uh, map. I was Miles. Uh, she showed up in the afternoon, right? Yes. Miles, so right um, there. Yep. Can we... I would like to... And we don't have to RP it if you want to just tell me how much it would cost. But I would like to go get just, like, two potions of regular healing. <laughs> not the greater, just the... The uh, 2d4. Given the market right now, since... It's, it's still pretty scarce. I mean, it's been six months. It's been Has six it months, but, you know, there's the rebuilding, there's the rehiring of people who had died. Um, okay. Can I get one for less than 75? So, it will cost, normally, if you're, if you would be, bleh. normally it would cost you 75 each. But, if you're buying two, they're willing to let you go, let go for... One thirty-five for the pair. Ooh. Rubble, 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 rubble. Um, uh, Is this I'll wait. You want to afford it, or you don't want to pay? I, st I st well, I still have one, so it was mostly just kind of getting them in case it's been in case it'll be a while. But we're gonna be, we're not gonna be necessarily like out away from all towns for a while, right? Like where we're going, is it near a city? There, there's small like towns along the way. You could definitely try to scope out like a few if you need to. All right, I'll just grab. You said it was one thirty-five for the pair. Mm -hmm. 
I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Cool. So it will. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, how much did it cost out of our? Um, does anyone know how much it cost out of the group funds to um, build the keep? Oh, um, I think we all covered it. We didn't need to use group funds. Are we sure? Yeah. Because I think you said that you were going to pay for the mill, and that was the only thing that was up in the air. Yeah, I and I took care of that, so. Oh, okay. So, okay. All right. Um, it's, it's a hundred, from roughly where the keep is, it's a hundred and ten miles, uh, where you guys are headed. So, if you guys are going by horseback, um, it'll probably take you, if you're not pushing the horses. Has the, uh, teleportation circle still not been repaired yet? I take it. I don't have teleportation circle as a spell. Yeah, but we might be able to pay somebody to just pop oh, us Oh, I see. Well, the problem is the teleportation circle in Valido has been repaired, but that doesn't get you to the coast of the Sea of Gadar. Okay, I didn't know if anyone, if there were any, you know, close. I wasn't sure if there, okay. Like this, this place is a little bit out of the way, yeah? Okay, that's yeah. fine. Like, the Sea of Gadarn is that body of water between Gadarn and Leona, and Valido's like smack in the middle. Alright. Yeah, so it's gonna take you a little So you said while. if we don't push the horses, it's how long? Uh, it's about two to three days, depending on weather, uh, which is, it is spring, so it tends to rain quite a bit, off and on. Mm, it's very wet. <laughs> now, the, the inventory, uh, the inventory, sorry, I read the word inventory and I said it. The information... Uh, that we're going on, is it something that is apt to change quickly? Like, do we absolutely need to push the horses, or can we go ahead and say, okay, we've got three, maybe four days if the weather gets bad, and it's going to be okay? Um, Elena tells you that the fireplace has been uh, established there for quite a while, so... Unless somebody tips them off, it seems like they'll be there for a bit. So she doesn't see the need to push the horses other than okay. her own impatience to try to do away with somebody she hates. Hmm. Right, right. I mean, that's that's something. <clears throat> uh, I personally think we should probably not push the horses uh, just in case uh, if there is something that comes up, we don't want to already all be exhausted or have the horses be exhausted in the middle of nowhere and, you know, suddenly assaulted by dragons, giants, Tarasks, whatever. That's, like, Alea says, that's fine. Um, I was, like, we should go slow uh, anyways. Mm -hmm. Just in case there's, you know, somebody along the way seeing, oh, these people are going to see Gadarn really fast for some reason. Yes. Uh, by I the would... way, Elena, mm -hmm. do you know Melanie? This is, um... <laughs> I don't yeah, think you I think she met, met Melanie. Have you? Was Elena... Yeah, because I was... At the, at the, uh, the, uh, sorry, the tavern, the, uh, Quivering Hills... Was yeah, I think, I think she was, wasn't she? Okay. Never mind then. She might have shown up during the rebellion at some point. So okay. I sure, whatever. I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a really long time. It um, has. But yeah, uh, so you guys can go at a more leisure-ish pace if you need to. Um, if, you're, if you're worrying about tiring out the horses. Well, we'll just go at a normal pace. Okay. I wouldn't call it leisurely. Yeah, okay, normal pace. Uh, I have to go get a notepad. I'll be right back. Well, she's gone mess up the story. Ah! <clears throat> do we have to actively try to do that? I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a good thing I don't that think I it's really... very hard. It's good that I really love Melanie because I'm making a bunch of characters for the one shot that I'm doing. 
And I really like a couple of them that I made, but I like Melanie more. So Melanie's not going to go anywhere. But I made a Hexblade Warlock named Everine Amakir, who is a freaking Shatter Kai, and so she can just teleport around and stab people, which is ridiculous. Actually, I guess she can only do that the one time. But she has Blink, so she can keep doing it if she rolls high enough. My next character idea is a Spore Druid. A what? A Spore Druid. A Circle of Spores Druid. Oh. Is that a UA, or is that... No, it's out of uh, Xanathar's. Mm -hmm. It's out of the Xanathar's? It was UA, and now it's official. I'm back. Yeah, just like Hexblade was uh, UA, but now it's not. Alright, there's my notepad. Um, so, yeah, you guys can... Sorry. Go um, at a normal pace. Uh, Elena will send a message ahead to meet with her contact at a specific location. Um, so you guys can stop and plan at this location once you get <coughs> all the information. Um, okay. So you head out maybe a couple hours after or like the following morning or uh, I say the following morning probably. No reason why we couldn't get ready. Is there a horse large enough to carry Bittersweet? Bittersweet can just be the horse. That's true, but I can <laughs> well, only... only for an out. Like, what is it? How it's many half, hours? It's half my druid level, so four hours. Which uh, is about... can you take a wagon. Well, it's four hours is about how long you should be running a horse, anyways, and before taking a short rest. And my wild shapes refresh on a short rest. Hmm. So. Okay. Interesting. And okay. Bittersweet can be a horse. Mm -hmm. If they so choose. Yep, I can carry one of you guys. That feels a little bit rude. Yeah. I don't mind. Zyta if nobody else will do it, Zaitari will uh, do it because she doesn't want uh, Bittersweet to feel weird. I feel like that makes more sense, though, because like I feel like I shouldn't because I'm wearing so much armor that, like, I'm not the lightest person here. I mean, not that any other horse is any stronger. You know, I'm just gonna just move on now. Trust me when I say that I can carry. Oh, we okay. might need the horse anyways, so we should take it. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll need an extra horse anyways to carry some stuff. So, we'll have an extra horse with us regardless. And I will ride bittersweet. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I knew it was going to happen. Don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that made it weird. I mean, yeah, that made it the most weird. <laughs> I mean, it's only weird if you want it to be bittersweet. And I give, I give uh, bittersweet a wink. And a big cheesy grin. What's uh, what's you get, you get a, just a kind of like a slow blink, <laughs> and then a nod. There's not tons that phase that phases them. Hmm. Okay, so you guys, I assume you have some horses around at this point. I'm not gonna make yeah, you. Yeah, we have stables. Horses. Yeah, they're stables. So. Uh, I'm not gonna make you go barter for horses. Um, Roll for horse. So I you mean, got... we had a cart at some point. Yeah, you guys probably we lose the cart. Yeah, you guys probably what's have the, a cart. What's the speed of a horse? Forty feet. Uh, so bitters bittersweet can actually turn into an aurox, which is a type of which is like a, a mountain ox, um, and their movement speed becomes fifty. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Can... Yeah, but then you'd be going faster than. The rest of us, or you know, keeping well, or going slow just to keep pace with us. I'll probably yeah, be but... a I'll probably be a giant elk just because 
Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. 100%. Totally. Honestly, going to if your speed right is any up. faster than anyone else, you could just scout ahead occasionally if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably just be a giant elk. Just because, um... Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. So... I think, right, I think right now I can be... See our two creatures? Um... Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, so you guys ride uh, towards the Sea of Gadar. It will take you about... On the weather... Let's see what kind of weather you're going to be encountering for this journey. Since it might rain. Uh, it, do it, rain it doesn't rain on the first day. But it rains on the second day. So it's going to take you about three days to get there. Okay. Um very muddy the roads are wet it's that kind of even when it's not raining there is a persistent mist in the air like do, like that kind of like spray that hits your face and it's really foggy at some points mm -hmm. but it's like you... silent hill i love weather like that <laughs> <laughs> i do too Eventually, you do uh, arrive in the evening of the third day to the designated meetup spot, uh, which is a, in, a, in a small town called uh, Mountain View. Uh, why it's called Mountain View, we don't know. It's, there's no mountain here. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> And it's a it's a very small town. It's probably only like it's like Greenland. Whoever named it was like, I'll name it Mountain View to make people want to come visit. Oh, so it's the site of a condo development. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Mountain View's pretty expensive to live in these days. It is. Oh my god. Yeah. <sighs> And the meetup is at a place called the uh, Brilliant Scarab Inn. Um, that is a brilliant scarab. <laughs> it's just, it's so bright. It does math. <laughs> Sorry. There, there is a scarab with a little notebook and glasses on the tavern side. Of course there is. Oh my god. Um... It, it's a modest tavern, um, better than the Ugly Harpy, that's for sure. And when you go inside, it is a fairly quiet night. Um, it, when you entered the town, it looked like most of the denizens here are farmers, laborers. Um, a couple, you, you got a couple um, wineries as you're passing uh, through down the roads. And there is a young half elven woman manning um, the bar. When we when we go in, can I look around and make sure nothing looks suspicious? Sure. Um so just for a perception check. Nothing seems to really look suspicious. Uh there uh, there are a couple farmers enjoying a more expensive meal than usual, like, you know, pheasant and potatoes with green beans. Um, there are a couple people, like three maybe stable hands and, or farm folk playing uh, some cards. And Elena will point the uh, table out near in the corner. There is a small person wearing a very wide brim straw hat and wearing a pair of faded blue overalls with um, like a very tattered looking um, plaid shirt uh, on the in inside where the overalls are covering. And Elena says our contact is that person over there. Um, and she motions you guys to follow her. And she will take a seat next to this small individual who is 
drinking from a tankard and has a bowl of what looks like maybe chicken dumpling soup in front of them. So before we um, before we went into the town, mm-hmm. like after I unwild shaped, I would have disguised myself. Okay, um, so just a I, few feet shorter than yourself. Uh, I look like um, oh, Willem what's Defoe. his name again? No, not Willem Dafoe. Lee Pace. <laughs> Lee Pace. Thank you. Thank you. I look like Lee Pace again. Okay. Nice. So, yeah, just, like, shorter, like, maybe half-elven guy with, you know, unusual features. Okay. Um, You all take a seat. Uh, The person you are looking at appears to be a halfling, um, a male halfling with dark curly hair um, and a, like a big bulbous nose. <laughs> and he looks up at all of you in surprise. And he lo- and he looks at Elena and he says, Deacon didn't know that you were bringing friends. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Elena. Elena's this? like, he's actually pretty Deacon? good. He's actually pretty good when he's not talking. And You're Deacon's like, very small. Deacon. <laughs> and Deacon says, Deacon knows, and Deacon thinks you're very half elfy. There's just a there, a, sl- a very slow huge grin is <laughs> spreading across Bittersweet's face. Uh, um, meanwhile, Tilda is like swooping down, Deacon darling, <laughs> and like giving Rips. him <laughs> Rips. Uh, no, uh, just oh. giving him like a kiss on each cheek. Yeah. Uh. And Deacon, in his like in his uh, halfling form, blushes a little bit. Uh, Deacon didn't think uh, Deacon would be seeing you so soon after uh, uh, the very very nice wedding. Well, thank you, darling. I, I didn't think I'd be seeing you either. Uh, Deacon, either. Deacon didn't know you were coming. Um, Deacon, uh, uh, Varys contacted Deacon. Uh, had favor to ask of Deacon and Deacon accepted uh, uh, for exchange of information and she, you see now Deacon is looking at Elena and Elena goes into her bag and pulls out a envelope and hands it over to Deacon um, I believe this is what you're looking for and Deacon immediately snatches the let, uh, the envelope you know um, opens it up, looks at it, nods satisfied, and puts it in his pocket, um, and reaches over and shakes Elena's hand. Deacon thinks this is satisfactory. Um, so you you do you, do you all have uh, questions for Deacon about the fireplace? Um. Yes. It might be better for you to tell us what you know first. Ah, okay. Should we should we maybe adjourn to a room or something? Maybe. Deacon looks around. <clears throat> Deacon thinks so. Deacon has a room. Um, and you hear Deacon call to uh, Anarita, and Anarita and the half elven bartender's like, huh? I. Uh, 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 Jared will take take order in his room, and Daniel anyway, is like, "All right, whatever." And Deacon's like, "Follow Deacon," and he begins to climb the stairs uh, towards his uh, room that he says is at the end of the hall. Uh, once you get to the top of the stairs, um, 
in his room, it's, you know, there's a bed, there's a couple, there's like two chairs, and there is a simple desk. Uh, He will sit on the desk um, and invites all of you to find, you know, gestures for you guys to find seating wherever you can. Um. I'm just going to stand near the door. Okay. Preferably if there are any windows with my back to the door and in view of a window. Okay. specific mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. all right uh okay so deacon has been to uh the fireplace um and this is what deacon has learned uh deacon was able to follow um octi and jenna uh to a few towns um deacon had to very carefully intervene a few times um, make sure nobody was hurt um, Deacon make it look like accidents Deacon doesn't think they, they noticed Deacon very small Deacon can be very quiet when Deacon wants um, the fireplace is weird um, they have many weird plants Deacon's never seen some of these before, and that that's that's a lot for Deacon. That's a lot coming from Deacon. Um, uh, thing like plants that can eat you. Um, Deacon almost mm-hmm. got eaten once. Not very pleasant experience for Deacon. Um, <coughs> they uh, um. had plants that looked like big, 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 big pictures, and they put things inside the pictures and then the things they put in the pictures disappear um like i think they get eaten by acid deacon (laughs) thinks it smelled like acid i i can go ahead and try (laughs) to make a nature check but i'm not smart okay I mean, that's it, really that's really good for me. <laughs> it so I mean, you've heard of pitcher plants, but mm. usually they're very small, and like the more civilized folk like them for like ornament, ornamental, order decor plants. Yes. Um, but what Deacon is describing is something. Pr- the pitcher is possibly bigger than he is, mm. like the pitcher portion. Um, and that's, that's the biggest freaking pitcher plant you've ever heard of. Yes, Would I pitcher. get the impression that this is something that's been magically altered? Uh, it, there's a strong possibility, but without mm. seeing the plant itself, but it's a strong freaking possibility. Um, Deacon tried to go in a uh, shrine room. Uh, where the the face spirit is imprisoned, Deacon can't get in. Uh, there are keys that you that you use to get into the shrine room. Um, Deacon knows that Gemma and Octi each have a key that will let you into the shrine room, but not regular key, more like uh, crystal, um, white crystal. And Deacon thinks it is, of course, uh, magically sealed. Uh, Deacon also thinks there is alarms. So Deacon did not try to dispel, or Deacon probably would get caught. Um, But uh, Deacon did test. Uh, Deacon first thanks you for necklace that you provided. Uh, Deacon, without Nicholas, noticed Deacon's mind being very fuzzy uh, when very close to the fireplace. The, the, the place, not an actual fireplace. Um, De- it, like, and Deacon, to, Deacon says, like being drunk? But not very drunk. Like, make Deacon feel tipsy, like, without 
the weird not being able to control hands and feet like tipsy in the head Deacon thinks um, Deacon watched some of the children um, some very young um, five year olds um, to 16 17 um, the longer initiates in the fireplace stay uh, the more brainwashed they become um, Octi has strange philosophy uh, called free living and Elena will nod at that um, Elena will say f the free living um, philosophy is what Octi uses to indoctrinate a lot of initiates. Um, what does it mean? Uh, the, the philosophy of free living, um, and she will try to recall as much as possible, is that um, there are cornerstones to his philosophy. Uh, Self-determination, charity, passion. Um, there, there are four four items. Um, being free is the most important of them. And he speaks, Elena says, as he pretends to be this prophet with this great philosophy. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I bought into it when I was younger. And because of the aura around the fireplace, but from what I understand from Deacon, it's a lot stronger than I used to when I was there. Um, it's easy to buy into this philosophy of free living, and I think it's a lot of bullshit now when you when you get out of that place and you're able to think for yourself. But it's 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 I can't really explain it. I know Octi had a manifesto he was writing while I was there and before I arrived as well. Deacon, and you see Deacon not. Octi's still, still, still doing the free living philosophy. Um, does anyone have questions for Deacon? What do Octi and uh, is it Jenna or Gemma? Uh, Gemma. Gemma. Uh, what do they look like? Uh, Gemma is is a uh, is Deacon. Gemma appears to be half Elven. Um, and you you see uh. A lady that was says, you know, looks weirdly. That's funny. Um, I remember her being human. And Deacon says, Deacon thinks she's been changing appearance. Uh, Deacon thinks that from pictures Deacon has seen in the fireplace, uh, Gemma has to change her look every once in a while. Um, but Deacon, pretty sure that Gemma, same person that Elena knew, um, just looks a little different. Chooses different race to be from time to time. Um, uh, Why Gemma does she have to change? Hmm? Why does she have to? Some people care about street children. Some people care if street children go missing. Same person taking all children might make people suspicious, Deacon thinks. Deacon likes to think that not everybody is cold-hearted towards the poor children. Or Deacon hopes. And what does Octi look like? 
Well, Gemma, <laughs> for, first, Gemma has long red hair now. Um, half elven now. Uh, very pretty green eyes. Um, Octi. Octi is half elf. Half, Octi always been half elf from, um, from Deacon's understanding. Uh, goatee. Uh, like goatee mustache combination. Mm -hmm. Um, very handsome man. Um, uh, long hair, long enough to shoulders, puts it in, uh, Deacon describes as man bun from time to time. <laughs> um, has, has lots of tattoos. So many tattoos. Um, Deacon thinks that Octi cover, covers himself in weird, weird tattoos. Like, looks like runes that Deacon never seen before. Um, and Elena will nod at this. Um, Deacon... Does it seem magical then? Deacon tried to figure out if Octi's tattoos are magical. Um, Deacon can't really tell. Deacon knows that Octi gets his magic from the Advocate. Um, and Elena says that's, that's his, what you would call a patron. Um, magically gifting him with all these, uh, all the, the magic he's able to perform, his powers. And this patron that you have, or had, and that Octi has, are they fiend, fae, or something else? At the same time, Elena and Deacon say, fae. Deacon, Deacon, Deacon. Lots of things at Fireplace seem very fae-based, uh, Deacon thinks. Um... Deacon, before job, never has heard of Advocate. Um, but what Elena tells Deacon, told Deacon is that Advocate is Archfey, and Elena will nod. Advocate is Archfey, um, but Deacon's never heard his name in Fey Court. So maybe Advocate... Uh, Arch, some type arch fey away from fey court maybe like one of the uh fey animal people um that don't necessarily serve in fey court um it's a long shot but could i make some kind of check uh because i have been doing fey based research yeah uh let's go with the history check all right. I mean, they're all the same, but, you know, just for funsies. Nope. Nope. Um, would, I, would I be able to do one just because Fearbolt, Fearbolt's being nature-based? Probably have a lot of contact with, uh, like, sylvan creatures. Yeah, I would give that to you, too. And being, like, a druid connected to nature, yeah, fae yeah. is very tied to your ancestry. History? Yes. It's a long shot. Hey! Ah! You're That's the best I will ever do. You're racking your brain. Yeah, you could get a natural 20. I could, but it's not gonna happen. Um... <laughs> you're trying to think. There are many... There are many entities in the Fey uh, well that would consider... That you would consider as the status of a uh, arch fay. Mm -hmm. The advocate yeah. sounds like a nickname, not his real name. That's for sure. Um, would, would I know of any arch fay in particular that have a reputation for dealing with children? Mm -hmm. Like any old fireside stories are like, this is something that you watch out for. 
there are there are a few stories that you recall um, that that the this archfey may be tied to. Um, let me give you Pied Piper. <laughs> um, let me give you a few names. So there's three names that will come up, that come up. Mm-hmm. Um, let me actually grab them. So Faye Wild, Faye Court, Arch Faye, Animal Lords. Um, Faye, there we go. One. <laughs> No, that's not what I want. Flesh Reaver? <laughs> what? Alright, so there's that that page. And there is... So, um... Reynard, R-E-Y... Let me just type it. <sighs> yeah, like the fox. Yeah, Reynard um, is one of these fey lords, uh, a trickster. Um, possible candidate, though usually Rain, uh, Reynard is a little... I'm not... sorry, you typed in Feynard, and I just <laughs> think that's the best unintentional pun you could have done. Uh-huh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, his name's Reynard, he's not Feynard. <laughs> I mean, he is Feynard now. <laughs> this is how we're going to insult him when we do meet him. <laughs> Hey, Feynard, give me your lunch money. <laughs> what are you, a fake nard? <clears throat> oh. I'm sorry. I get smote. <laughs> <laughs> just got more, whatever this is, it just got more powerful. <laughs> Anyways. Right, so Rain- Reynard is one. Reynard's one, but he typically isn't <clears throat> malicious per se, and he it's will, like, trick children, tricky. but he's, he's a very tricky individual, so you don't know what he is, could, could possibly be capable of. Mm-hmm. Um, there is... Hold on. Uh, ox. Vulture. Other notes. Um, sorry, I'm trying to f- find. There we go. Uh, there is possibly right. Uh, Baba Yaga is the other one. Um, mm. She is like. It's very similar to the Russian lore. Mm-hmm. Um, she is more or less a chaotic neutral entity, um, but has been known to go after the innocent. Um, more innocent, the better. Children are on top of that list. Um, And then there is, and I don't know why I always give myself these names that I cannot freaking pronounce. Mm-hmm. Well, when you're dealing with Fey, they a lot of them have ridiculous some weird-ass names. Weird-ass yeah. Things. Fey and dragons. Yeah. Also, anything, just anything on the Storm Coast, anything at all, it has fucking weirdest names. Like what? Uh, I don't know. Like I, I've just been looking at them, and it's basically you just take a. You, I think like what they did to come up with these names was they just took a handful of consonants and a handful of vowels. I can't pronounce them together and went. I can't pronounce that name. Domnale. Domnale. Yeah, Domnale. I think the. I think the D H is silent. Hang on. Yeah, at the end it uh, is silent. And MH, um, I think, is actually a V sound. So Dovnale. Dovnale? Okay. I, I wasn't sure. Okay, no, I, no, okay, so I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Okay. Dovnale? Um, so, it's saying do. Uh, so you can uh, pronounce do, it. Dovnale? Uh, Dolly? 
or Donnelly. Don or or Donnelly. Donnelly. Okay. Yeah, Donnelly. There you go. So Do Dolly or Donnelly. And he is more of a. He is like Baba Yaga on crack. Oh um, boy. Yeah, he is a m malicious, nefarious. You could almost call him evil. Um, but he almost, almost, almost. <laughs> like he does a ton of horrible shit. Like he has, but it's like he's too, he's almost too capricious. Yeah, yeah. Faye and it. Faye are a little bit too weird, I think, to in general give them the evil tag. They're pretty much just pure chaos. Yeah, he and he is as chaotic as they come. Um, but he's, he's not. He's not benevolent. At he all. is not benevolent at all. He is. I think we found a winner, guys. He's known <laughs> as the the horned arch fay. Um, many people describe him as devil like, even though he is not. Um, but there might be some influence in there. So yeah. So bittersweet is like thinking about all of this and and says. Uh, when I was a child, there were fireside stories that the elders would tell us about the Fae. And they told us not to go too deep into the woods at night or we'd be taken. I can think of two or maybe three that might fit that description. And would just like go over okay. uh, the same things. If I had been and say as I, if I had to make a guess between them, I would say that it would probably not be Renard. But I cannot rule out Baba Yaga. She has a fondness for children. <laughs> um Elena will say um, what contact she had with the uh, the advocate. Um, she doesn't know too much about them. Um, Octi claimed that the uh, free living philosophy was based off of his and then her patron. Um, but she had never heard of a name other than the advocate given to the patron that she once followed. So it, it is possible it could be one of the three you mentioned, she would say, but she can't be a hundred percent sure. Name, like none of these names are ever given, read, or whispered, or anything like that. Um, Deacon will say, Deacon, Deacon did not hear any of these names before. Um, well, before this, Deacon knows Baba Yaga. Uh, Deacon does not know the Pestily? other two. No, 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 oh, jeez, no. Deacon doesn't want to- We are storytellers. <laughs> most people, mo most storytellers know Baba Yaga. Yeah. Baba Yaga has moving house, horsemen, that kind of thing. Deacon doesn't want to meet Baba Yaga in a dark alley. I wouldn't want to meet Baba Yaga in broad daylight. Or <laughs> cannonball. Iron teeth she has, they say. Um, uh, if we're iron dealing with the Fae, is there iron. some way to protect ourselves from uh, the charming and brainwashing influence that you've described. Uh, Deacon will point to his necklace, uh, which is similar, is very similar to the ones that Elena had crafted for you guys. Um, Deacon, Deacon, Deacon says this works really well. Uh, Deacon did suggest the cold iron, which Deacon sees that Elena put in new necklaces. Cold iron, very good against Faye. 
um, should strengthen against uh, mind-altering effects of aura that's given by the spirit. Is there a difference between cold iron and regular iron? Yes, Deacon says. Mm. Uh, cold iron uh, affects many of the fey creatures. Um, if fey creature uh, regenerates, um, stops regeneration if hit with cold iron. Um, seems to be more painful to fey creatures than regular iron. Um, Deacon experienced this firsthand. Bittersweet, like, takes their, like, unwraps part of the chain from around their shoulders from their hammer and, like, just looks at it thoughtfully. They found it in a field. They don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deacon, um, so Deacon, uh, 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 word, 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 hypothesize that coat iron interlaid with auricalcum are the in amulet should strengthen versus fey magic. Hmm. Well, that'll be useful. And we, uh, as, you know, uh, you know, people like me and Miss Til Miss Mrs. Tilda, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, um, no, uh, auricalcum highly resistant to magic in general. Um, which cold iron should strengthen against magic? Hypothesize, Deacon does say, though. <laughs> Not tested yet. Well, okay. I mean, we'll just have to find out, I guess. Uh, but Deacon, do Deacon does, does say that original amulet works pretty well. Um, well, Deacon, would you say that it might be possible. Um, I don't think we're going to get Octi, but since Gemma has one of those keys, do you think it might be possible to lure Gemma out? Or, at the very least, maybe ambush her while she is away from their headquarters? Because, obviously, they recruit, and you said that she does recruiting. Yes. Usually, Gemma go out with group. Um, what Deacon has observed is Gemma, though very loyal to Octi, does seem to care about all their members. Um, Deacon has never seen Gemma act cruelly to any of them. Deacon thinks, believes that she truly cares for them. Um, that being said, um, if Octi is not at fireplace, Gemma probably will not leave. Uh, Gemma does not want the children not to be protected. Gemma needs to protect them, Deacon believes. How often does she leave? <sighs> Depends. Uh, Deacon has only been following them for a few weeks. Uh, Deacon has only seen them leave base maybe once? Or once we a week for supplies, or once every week half to get recruits. It depends on how many recruits go through initiations, and if they are strong. And not weak. Hmm. Members of Fireplace, unlike Gemma, can be very cruel to initiates. Gemma does uh. not participate, but members tend to be cruel. I have a question, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know which of you might be able to give us information on this, but 
Will we to uh, acquire one of these crystals that would get us into this uh, altar room, uh, whatever where the uh, where the Fey being is? If we were to get rid of it, would the magical aura over the place uh, that uh, muffles the mind, and I realize this is not necessarily the psychological damage that's been done over years, but at least the magical aura, would it dissipate, do you think? Elena will say it took her many years of reintegrating into society to become normal, but she was more clear-headed when she had left. Um, well, we have no way of knowing if the fey creature's presence uh, has any magical effect on the area until it's gone. Deacon will say, uh, Deacon says, uh, Deacon has other theory. Um, sounds like and uh, Elena will, Miss Elena will, um, this fey spirit not there when you there, right? Uh, one that's trapped, and Elena will nod, um, because what Deacon has heard, or think, like, what Deacon thinks, uh, from what, uh, he has heard, Deacon has heard, is a fey creature was introduced later. Um, thinks training may have not been very as accepted. That's why aura needs to be strengthened. Deacon also has hypothesis knowing a little bit about fey. Um, if Shrine is, if a spirit is defeated, hmm, did you, did, did, did Miss Elena bring the, um, um, Ori Calcum, like Deacon suggested, and, um, uh, Elena will, uh, produce a bag, uh, looks like it's filled with some kind of, um, Almost like it's filled with sand. It has kind of a, um, when she lifts it out of the bag, there's like some weight to it. Um, but it's not like a rock or anything. It's more like a grainy, um, flower like. Or a calcum dust. Yeah. Deacon, Deacon thinks, and Deacon, Deacon has a few theories. Uh, Deacon thinks if this is what Deacon. It's actually happening if if Fae Spirit is bound to Shrine and Fae Spirit is held against will, if Shrine may be purified, then that might break Aura. But if Fae Spirit is malevolent, Maybe only way to destroy actual face spirit is to break shrine and destroy face spirit. Um, problem is, in that case, Deacon really hopes it's trap spirit, not bad spirit, because if Aura is taken down in violent manner and not taken out willingly might have weird effects on mm. people influence um, this is this is what Deacon thinks after experience with fey creatures you tear Deacon says you tear something it leaves damage you you have voluntarily move slowly less damage that makes some uh yeah deacon um uh deacon uh 
Deacon only knows this because Deacon has uh, dealt with. Um, uh, t has anybody ever heard of uh, Bear King? Uh, can I make a roll for it? Yeah, you can make a roll for that. Uh, what would it um, be? Can I make a roll? Yeah, too? sure. Or... Anybody who is, uh, if you want to make a Arcana or History check, you may. Both mm. are All the city. city. This is not one of my stories. <laughs> nope, never heard a story. This might be something I came across with a 10. Tilda knows the Everything. Bear King personally. <laughs> <laughs> he was at the wedding. Yep. <laughs> we were wondering why there was just a whole salmon left on the gift table. <laughs> and now we know. <laughs> Hold on. Typing his name. I mean, is it not the Bear King? His real name Messy is, Common. is Messy Common. He is known as the Bear King or Old Honeypaws, and he rules the Aww. northern kingdom of Bijorno. Um I will spell that too. I was about to say, of DiGiorno? Me, DiGiorno? <laughs> Bjorn M. Oh, oh Bear Bjorn. Realm. Hmm. It's Bear Realm. Bjorn. Yeah, it's Bear Bjorn. Realm. Mm -hmm. um, he is. Prob he is ranking in the Fey court. He is the one of the lower arch Fey lords. Um, he really doesn't do much other than have. He's very associated with honey, so drinks lots of mead. Um, he has really Winnie good mead. Uh, he has hive keepers in his realm. He has a court full of bear yarls, witches, and oracles, and spends most of his time brawling, feasting, and hunting in the hills. No, because this sounds fucking amazing. And if, 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 and, um, yeah, he is, he is very probably similar to Cord. Um, but in his realm, yeah, he must be bested in combat in order to be overthrown. Um, he's one of those lords. Very similar to the warlords of Robur, who um, their leadership, if somebody wants to um, fight them in one-on-one -on -one combat, and they are Roburian, um, they have a possibility of taking the position of warlord. Um, similar to the Bear King. Bear King, very nice, Deacon says. <laughs> very drunk. You are very smart. <laughs> Deacon, thanks. Thanks. Mm. Bittersweet? You can't. I, I, sometimes I wish there was a webcam because I'm just smiling. <laughs> um, Deacon, thanks you. Mm -hmm. Um, So. That's how Deacon knows lots of bay things. Spend time with Bear King. Bear King, very amused by Deacon. Sometimes uses bears to chase Deacon. That was not fun. Deacon doesn't want to be hunted again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any other questions? Uh, about how far away is it from here? Ah, um, about a couple hours travel. About on foot. Uh, took Deacon three and a half hours. Can Deacon has tiny legs, though. Can you draw us a map of the interior bits that you saw? Mm-hmm. Um, Deacon will sketch out a map. Um, it will look similar to... So, hold on, I need a bright... I get a nice color. There we go. So, uh, shaped like square. So, garden in the middle. 
this entrance. That's where Big Cart is uh, when they go to cities and get supplies. Garden is here. Um, uh, Mr. Octi's office is over here. Uh, shrine room connected to Octi's office and bedroom. Um, so shrine room here. Um, dormitory here where all members sleep. Uh, kitchen and eating and cafeteria here. That's where they make food and do other things. And lounge area connected to door. Deacon, uh, that all the rooms Deacon saw. Oh, well, except for Shrine. Never, Deacon not be in Shrine. Deacon just listen to all information Deacon could get about Shrine. Never seen Shrine, um, never seen Shrine. But seen right. door to Shrine. We understand. Does the Shrine share a wall with the outside? Or is it inside the build? Deacon, when we're looking outside, Deacon thinks it's like basement. Saw door. But when Deacon walk outside, Deacon not see room. So Deacon thinks it go down. I wonder if we can tunnel it in. I can dig very well. Can you turn into a dire badger? <laughs> what CR is it? I can't. I can't. It doesn't honey exist. Yeah, no, the dire honey badger doesn't exist. It's a dire ba no dire badger exists, doesn't it? Well, giant dire badger. Hunter, dire dire honey badger. No, giant ba giant badger exists. Yeah, I don't know if you have anything with a burrow speed or not. Yeah, a uh, giant badger. Um, it is a CR one fourth, so I can. It's a burrow speed of ten feet. Hmm. Or. But um, Deacon will show you where fireplace is. Deacon, <clears throat> though, will not be coming. Um, according to information Miss Elena gave me, Deacon has to leave um, after Deacon shows you. Very important business. But why? He looks very sad. Deacon, Deacon needs to find an old friend. Deacon, Deacon wants to make sure old friend is okay. And Deacon owes friend life. Deacon, think, Deacon knows you all heroes of Leo. That Deacon knows you'll be fine. Is it Master Big Grin, Deacon? You see Deacon nod. Deacon worried. Deacon has not heard from him for a while, and Deacon needs to see him. Deacon's very sorry. Do you know the sending spell, darling? Mm-hmm. If you need any help, send us a message. Deacon will. Um, but Deacon wants you to rescue children. Um, Deacon... Children will not go willingly. Not, not children been there for a long time. Not the children that's been there for a long time. New ones, maybe. Old ones, you might have to knock them out. Well, I mean, the other option is just dealing with the leadership. And then, hopefully, they'll be a bit more willing when they see that, well, their leader isn't there anymore. But, I mean, we have a couple different options. Um, I don't know how to scry, 
Does anybody know how to scry? I say to the room. I'm looking at animals. That uh, I can turn into. <laughs> I do not know how to scry. Um, I know... I'm pretty sure Nenreen did, but... Yeah, Nenreen could as a knowledge cleric. Just always had that prepared. Um, um, honestly, Nenreen is probably just like a feral elf wandering around libraries now. Like um, Probably. I, I, I would, but I don't know 5th level spells. Okay. Yeah. That was what I figure just yeah I think I probably have it on my spell list I just decided not to take it because we usually don't need that but maybe not I don't know oh well I mean you could always prepare it tomorrow what uh, no you... I can't because I'm a wizard oh maybe. I thought you said you, I thought you had it in your no I mean I have Look, it like okay. a in a what spell we... list on the what wizard we spell on? list gotcha 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 I think. What, no, yeah, you do, you can uh, learn divination as a wizard. Um, what do we want to scry on? I was thinking, um, Octi. Because if you want to get an inside look, I can be very small. Well. Octi or Gemma, but here's what I was thinking. Rain, you can be invisible and bittersweet. I do have arcane eye. Yeah. Um, but bittersweet, you can be very small. I was thinking... Rain and Bittersweet go in together. Um, bittersweet as something small that can fly, that can scout around, and Rain following close behind, obviously very quietly and stealthily as she does. Um, that way, if we manage to find Gemma or Octi alone, I'm confident in our rogue's ability to pickpocket and snatch one of those keys. Once we have one of those, we can get back in, all of us, through the portable hole, and get into that shrine. Um, Deacon will raise a hand. Um, Deacon knows that... I don't... Deacon doesn't know where Octi keeps key. Deacon knows Gemma wears key around neck. Mmm. Deacon has seen it. At least it's not kept in nature's pocket. <laughs> Dear lord. Deacon does not well. understand. <laughs> don't worry, Deacon. Okay. I don't get the reference. Well, I still am well, very confident. A woman loves a key very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> I still am very confident in Rain's ability to slip things off of people when they aren't really paying attention. Well, what if I mean, if she, unless she wears it when she's asleep, we should be able to just go in at night and loot her room. Mm, she might wear it when she sleeps, though. We don't. She know. probably wears it when she sleeps. Oh, uh, it would be easier to get it off of her if she's asleep, though. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Even no, if she sucks on it like a little kid or something. You don't know. She, she could put a magical harder than most signs. She so. could put a magical alarm around her room. What if... But we know that she leaves the compound and she recruits people. Getting it when they're not in the compound is probably easiest. We could... Here's the thing. Mm. I was thinking the same thing of waiting for her to leave, but uh, then that would mean that there are more children going through the initiation and potentially being sacrificed. So I don't know how long we want to wait for that to happen. Because oh, I have an idea. if it takes too long, then... What if everything know. goes tits up and they get away, then it's... 
even worse than waiting. What if we wait until they go for supplies and then we just mug them like, oh, we're bandits. <laughs> and then we just take all their shit. I mean, that was the idea. Oh, I yeah. thought you meant you were going to pickpocket it when they were out of town, when they were, you know, in town. And I'm thinking we could just mug them on the road and they'd be like, oh, they have bandit problems getting out of hand. Oh, well, just go about the day. Still, yeah. uh, the whole waiting thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Continue. I meant more jumping them while they were in transit. But if Octi does keep his key somewhere, um, I imagine it would probably be in his office. Um, again, we could have Bittersweet and Rain search the office both to try and find it. Now, the, the shrine room, it was... At least from the office, we know it was a stone wall, right? Uh, Deacon says, Deacon, yeah, De there's stone wall in, in, Mist in Octi's office. Oh, can we just stone shape through the wall? It'll be loud. That's the only problem. Oh, it makes a lot of noise. Well, um, not necessarily makes a lot of noise. I mean, loud as in it'll just be noticeable that somebody somebody is tunneling outside of their compound well no i'm saying like sneak in get into the office without moving anything dirt wise and then just move the wall a little bit shimmy oh through. stone shape through the door or or just any part of that wall and then just put it back when you're done hmm. <sighs> maybe tell me uh bittersweet would you be able to uh, prepare locate object? I could. Oh, so we locate the key. Yeah, what about again, you going uh, we get there um, so long as we're within a thousand feet of the compound um, we could do some locate object and see if we can get a ping from any keys. And we'll know if we only sense one, then the other uh, uh, the other key might potentially be in a pocket dimension. I can prepare whenever you need me to. I think it would be useful. I only need a day. Well, we'll be sleeping before we move in the morning to get there, so... <sighs> Sorry. Does anybody else have any other ideas? Well, before we go anywhere, I would like to see if we can find any cold iron, maybe nails or whatnot. Just bits of it, just to fuck with some fae. Uh... Would so like the average like nail that just some random dude makes, is it generally cold iron or not? It's usually regular iron. Damn. Um, Deacon will say, uh, so cold iron, Deacon says, is a um it's a rare form of iron left over from the creation of uh the parallel planes, you know, material plane, Feywild, Shadow Fail from the elemental chaos. <laughs> Usually oh, very so hard to not, find. <laughs> not used as building materials. No. Okay, then. No. I thought it was a way of preparing regular iron. Mm -mm. So. It's okay. very, very, very tough. Uh, usually regular blacksmith will ruin many sets of tools working with one piece uh, cold iron. Um, has to be... Uh, in past, Deacon knows that... Uh, or has to be worked from single piece. Can't be smelted. Too cold. All right then. No Niles. Got ya. Yeah. Uh, hmm. yeah. I'm trying to see if I have anything that is will fuck with Faye in particular, but it's all cleric stuff, not druid stuff. Um, yeah, no banishment or anything I got moon, like that. I got Moonbeam. Honestly, Moonbeam could be really useful. Yeah, it would prevent them from shifting. Um. 
I got Moonbeam. I got, hang on, let me pull up the Druid spell list. Mm -hmm. uh, Deacon, Deacon says, yeah, Cold Iron, very difficult get. Uh, Theris knew few, uh, few contacts, so that's how um, Elena got her Cold Iron. Uh, but otherwise, um, yeah. Uh, lesser rest, locate object, moonbeam. Uh, dispel magic. Uh, charm monster. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I just know that. Mm -hmm. Um, but having a second person who wouldn't just know that would be helpful, I think. Uh, polymorph. I know. Okay. Can prepare. Um, blight, I have. Uh, mm, blight might be good if we run into any, you know, evil plants like. Uh, we, yeah, we know that they say they had a crazy garden. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we know that there's bad plants. Um, I can also just conjure. A shitload of quicklings. Yeah, that's basically the druid equivalent of fireball. Yeah, I can I can just do. Oh God. Um, let me open Cobalt Fight Club, and I can tell you what I can right. do. <laughs> Cobalt Fight Club. Oh, Cobalt Fight Club. I said I thought you said Furbog Fight Club, and I was really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Kobolds are less exciting. <laughs> having kobolds having a fight club is less exciting. I can do a bunch of darklings. Mmm, those are fun. Um, is a spell a bunch of darklings? Oh, I think it's summon woodland beings, but yeah, I. It, yeah, it's conjure woodland. I know you. I know you were joking. Yeah. I every time I hear about conjure, conjure woodland beings, I think about like the one time Keyleth used it, and they both just insta died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can do two dryads. I can do, um. Uh, let me see. A Darkling Elder, a Mean Lock, a Nereid. What about a Nice Lot? <laughs> oh, a Sea Hag Spriggan. Um, actually, it depends on what sources Derek lets me use. I mean, I'll let you use any official sources and the Creature Codex and the Tome of Beasts. God damn. And oh, there's so there's so much nice stuff in the Tome of Beasts and, and Creature Codex Perfect. Um and fifth edition foes. Because since I use monsters from them, I don't see why you guys can't. It might fuck me over. <laughs> but you know I don't what? know, they're balanced. They're pretty balanced. Um but or I wouldn't have thought of it because I don't remember all the monster manuals. Um, but if I use them, I'll let you guys use them. Um, what CR are pixies? I think they're like one. Fourth. Yeah, I think they're one or one half. They are one fourth. Because they I are one fourth. Lower. Because I can make eight pixies. Because if you're doing what I think you're doing. <laughs> then fuck you. <laughs> Eight pixies, all of them cast polymorph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's coming back. <laughs> yep. So everything except pixies. <laughs> it's eight pixies and all of them cast sleep. Too bad um, they can't combine their powers into like super sleep. They're pixies, of course they can. Shh. Oh, I thought you were you can, you can send them pixies, but they're pixies. <laughs> and they will do what they want. Oh my god, I can make eight boggles? What about blink dogs? I can make, uh... Yeah, I can make eight blink dogs. Um... I can do... Four darklings. 
or four satyrs. She's boggled by how many boggles she can make. There's boggles. <laughs> boggles are very complicated for a one-eighth creature. I have no idea what they are, so I, I was just making a pun. Um, I can make two quicklings. A very bad pun, but a pun nonetheless. Or I can make a sea hag. Or a mean lock. But what about a nice lock? I appreciate a dear joke, yes. Thank you. Um, or I can make a nariad. I mean, it's probably going to play it by now, ear, I imagine. When you make them, do they listen to you? Or are they possibly going to fuck us up? No, they listen to me. Okay. They right. are friendly to you and your companions. Okay. Friendly. So frankly, not standards. controlled. They obey any verbal commands that you issue to them, no action required. If oh, you don't okay. issue any commands, the only the action they take is defending themselves from hostile creatures. Okay, that's not too bad then. If your concentration is broken, the fake creature don't disappear. Instead, you lose control of the fake creature and it becomes hostile towards you and your companions. Yeah. What uh, what's your max CR that you can do for these things? Uh, one Fey of two uh, CR two. Okay. I'm just seeing what else. Oh, you can do a kid. No, no, it's no, it's the creature no, codex. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing about they become <gasps> fossil. You could summon That's the iron yeah. teeth of Baba Yaga. If you look at our CR two tiny Fey in the creature codex. Oh, sorry. Well, according to the Roll Twenty Compendium. You look, conjure fey, right? No, conjure woodland beings. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was looking at fey. No, a creature Man, disappears. Oh, wow, disappears. yeah. Like, never mind. Yeah, disappear. a creature disappears when it drops to zero hit points or when the spell ends. Um, I can do... Tome of Beasts, you say. Yeah, Creature Codex has the Iron Teeth of Baba Yaga. Maybe we shouldn't summon somebody's teeth that might be the person we have to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are their ironic own yes. thing. So. It'd make the fight kind of toothless, don't you think? <laughs> 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 well, before we uh, get too deep into the um, planning of all this, uh, we're going to need to obviously get there and then potentially do scouting. Is Rain yeah. okay with uh, potentially going in and doing scouting along with um, Bittersweet? That's uh, what you guys hire me for, right? I mean, only if she wants to. She doesn't have to. It's as good a plan as any, I think. Yeah, because I was mostly thinking that um, Rain should go in besides just bittersweet and in lieu of the arcane eye so that she can take one of the keys because did you pr if... just pronounce lu as liu yeah in okay. liu no that's how you say it no yes it is whatever you guys are wrong you've been saying it wrong your whole lives leave cool. everyone please stop fighting um, <laughs> they're tearing this family apart. <laughs> okay, but like, um, I'm worried about sending one person in by themselves, though. Well, it would be, yeah, cause that's the other reason I don't want just bittersweet to go in. Even two, I mean, if something happens, the rest of us are just, you know, sitting outside, what? Twiddling your thumbs. Well, here's the thing I can dimension door myself and another person right in there. So. I can go up to 500 feet away. I'm just casting magic missiles from back here using Arcane Eye and... <laughs> like, I know the Arcane Eye is smart, but we can't do anything with the Arcane Eye physically. Which is why I just think it would be good to have Bittersweet and Rain do it. Mm. But we could just be in the portable hole. I mean, I know that we're abusing that, but she also knows we're going to abuse it. So, you know. We're eventually going to run out of air in there. We are. We're, yeah, that's my but, only 
you my can only punch cons- your way out of it if you have to. Remember, we put that true. one thing in and it just popped out and fucked us yeah. up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, we could we could uh, be in the portable hole at the same time. We just can't communicate with each other. That's the only problem. True. But bittersweet and um, bittersweet and rain will be able to communicate. Maybe we should give bittersweet here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Zaitari will take off her brooch and pin it on bittersweet's. Uh, what does bittersweet wear? Best. Um. Bitter, yeah, Bittersweet would wear a vest, no shirt, mm-hmm. um, and just, like, regular, just, like, leather pants that they just... Probably the same ones that Melanie got them. Okay. So, uh. they they have one outfit, and they're sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> I found a um, look in this bit. <laughs> Bittersweet, um, when you have this on, you won't be able to talk to me, because this is mine. But you'll be able to talk to Rain telepathically. As long as you're within a mile of each other. So it will help for tomorrow. All right. And it should work while you're wild shaped. Do you want to test that now? I can. And uh, I will, um, I'll wild shape into, uh, into a cat again. And uh, attempt to, I guess, um, telepathically communicate with, uh, with Rain. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, you can. Can I roll for scritches? <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. Uh, uh dexterity? <laughs> Check? Throwing things back, I hear you. <laughs> works good <laughs> do you let uh... melody scritch you <laughs> yes i, I do it twice. even I... though even though she rubs my fur the wrong way i do oh i'm oh. so sorry oh i'm not the i'm mediocre at pets <laughs> I would imagine that Bittersweet's just thinking about how unpleasant it might be, and because of the brooch, it just goes out to everybody. <gasps> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bittersweet That's isn't. So mean to my mediocre oh. petting. Fuck. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess they, they don't really know how to use the bro- brooch. Would they be broadcasting just to everybody? Sure. <laughs> no! <laughs> it was only a suggestion. You don't have to do it. No, so if they're broadcasting to everything, to everybody, it's not really, it's just a, a sensation of just overwhelming contentment. Oh. At being pet. Oh. Deacon looks very confused. All right. So does well, Elena. To... <laughs> okay. Like, uh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to take that silence to be that it worked. Rain, did it work? <laughs> yes. yes, it it worked. <sighs> all right. I think, uh, why don't we eat? I'm going to drink a couple glasses of wine and go to sleep and then uh, we'll get up bright and early um, to get to the compound. There's I mean, That wasn't something we were supposed to respond to, right? That was just somebody's actual nope, door or something? No, nope, that was a that knock was... on the door and Deacon says, oh, one second. And Deacon goes to the door. Thank you, Anarita. And Deacon comes back and he is balancing a 19 pound turkey. Jesus! <laughs> and he Is that all for it... you, Deacon? Deacon knew he was having company. Deacon didn't know it was you guys. Deacon would have ordered more. Deacon didn't know it was this many people. 
and Deacon's going to put the uh, put the turkey on the chair because he can't get to the desk with it's half his size. I'll lift it up on the table. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Deacon will get some plates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from Deacon's bag of holding, he takes a, a jug of mead and puts it on the thing. We don't have to fight bears for this, do we? Mm -mm. Uh, Deacon, um... No, Deacon got this from a uh, meadery up the road. Just come get not, pets not as, if you want pets. Not, not, not as good as Bear King Mead. Uh, but Deacon thinks it's palatable. I'll, I'll thank you not to insult things that come from my home, darling. Deacon, sorry, but very wild meat is pretty good. <laughs> from, from beehives. I'm teasing Deacon. Oh, darling. okay. No way, that. <laughs> okay. Um, but he says you guys can have some. <laughs> No, oh, it, it was for you. <laughs> and Deacon's gonna grab a turkey leg and get his plate, put some roast potatoes on it that, that were on the side, and carrots, and just start eating. At this point, he lets the disguise self drop. Um, so Bittersweet sees this kobold munching on a turkey leg. Oh. Are you still a cat? No, I would have shifted. Back. Okay. And you start. You... You're Throw... even smaller. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Deacon, uh, Deacon knows that. Um, are you still in Lee Pace form? Yeah, I still look like Lee Pace. Okay. <laughs> I say, uh, does this mean that I can be bigger now? Your oh yes, obviously. And he's a real burger. I threw it this mouth. Bittersweet is taller than all of us. I drop the disguise self. And he just like he, like he opens his mouth. There's like a little couple like um, a piece of potato falls out onto his pl uh his plate from his <clears> mouth. <throat> ah, ah. <laughs> Deacon, darling, it's rude to stare. I'm, no, and Deacon, to... sorry. Deacon hasn't seen uh, Furbog in some time. We don't generally come this far down. No, oh, oh, Deacon, Deacon, no, oh, oh, uh, must <clears throat> mean your. <laughs> he peers at you. You are Leonian Furbog. I think our clan made its home up closer to what you would call North Hat, mm. I think it's the main. Oh, mountain. Okay, those mountains. Yeah, Deacon only have met Furbogs in Wilds and couple in uh, Broken Isles, islands in the middle. Oh. I've never met... Any others of my kind, other than those from my clan? Well, if uh, if Deacon survives trip um, to find friend, then Deacon uh, will try to introduce you to some of Deacon's friends, who are fur box. Oh, uh, hi I... there! I'm Pumat Soul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think that would be a good idea. Okay, that's fine. He he um he's like halfway through his turkey leg at this point. Bittersweet seems satisfied with that. Okay. Why won't my character sheet? Okay, there. Um, <laughs> uh, Elena will politely decline uh, some turkey. She is um not feeling very well. Um, I moment. eat whatever she doesn't eat. Okay, um, but yeah, he, you, you, you guys are more, you guys are more than welcome to partake in uh, turkey and potatoes and carrots and onions, and mead. 
um, <clears throat> if you wish. <laughs> Hell yeah. I do think we should probably take it easy on the mead since we do have, you know, things that we'll have to do. Just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not drinking too much tonight. No worries there. I only said a couple, not 12. Okay. Um, and you guys, like, chat and eat uh, the meal um, in in a comfortable setting. Elena will excuse herself. Uh, she's going to go grab a room. Um, she needs to <clears throat> get some rest. Uh, she doesn't think she's going to get too much sleep tonight, but she, she thinks she, she'll try to get as much rest as possible. Um, and then she will leave the room. And Deacon will continue to finish, polish off his turkey leg. Bone and I'm... all? Not, well, he's got the teeth for it, so he'll, like, get, like, till you hear yeah, a crunch. That's what I'm wondering. Um, and then he will start sucking the marrow from the bone. Mm. Cool. Mm. <laughs> like, look over and Bittersweet is doing the same thing. <laughs> It's, Deacon thinks it's the best part. <sighs> Lots of good stuff inside bones. Mm -hmm. Lots of nutrition. Uh, Deacon Deacon knows that uh, in some places uh, you spread it on uh, bread after, like, you get. Uh, and he describes pretty much like bone marrow and bread, and if you put it in the oh. oven, and like, it turns to like meat butter, pretty much. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Gross. Oh, dude, bone marrow is so good. Gross, you guys. I I'm with I'm with Ro on this. It's really really rich. It's oh, super rich. It, yeah, it just grosses me out. I I know that it's it's like a a thing that people like. Kelly loves yeah. it, and I was just like, oh yep yep, that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. I well I'm I'm the same way about like cartilage. Like I know oh. I I've, I've known a couple of people who just eat cartilage. Ew. Ew. Well, I'm, Ew. No. well, I mean, like you know, you know, like pickled pig's ears, or just like mm, okay, yeah, cartilage yeah, okay. and like like stew, like like pork knuckles or something like that, or beef knuckle. Oh, yeah. And I just like chow through it. I'm just like, no, oh, the texture. Oh, no. yeah. I was I was thinking like cartilage on chicken wings. It's like, ugh. but when it if it's stewed for long enough, it can be fine. Uh, yeah, it sounds something like chicken feet. Um. There, there's some cartilage there. But anyways. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not into eating feet if I can help it. I mean, uh, I've known people. I, I had a friend in middle school who brought like an entire jar of pickled chicken's feet to school for lunch. And we were all like, Ugh. <laughs> and she's like, no, it's, it's delicious. Shut up. <laughs> We're like okay more props to her yeah like now as an adult i'm looking back i'm like okay yeah that's more props to her but as a kid i was like that's mm -hmm. disgusting you you need to not bring that to school <laughs> i feel like eating it by itself is honestly even as adult a little weird like if that was the whole lunch just mm -mm. yep that's... just a big jar oh mm. You gotta, you gotta put something else with it. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that we, I will allow. Are we gonna do this recon tomorrow, then? <sighs> yes. What do we need to... Uh, okay, well, I guess... I mean, we're... we don't really have to. I mean, it could be tonight. The only thing we've lost is some wild shape, I think, right? Yeah. Well, well, I get it back with a short rest. Yeah, but uh, the Bittersweet wanted that... to change the prepared uh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. the big The thing. only thing we're lacking right now is uh, locate object. Well, uh, I'm going to turn in and uh, see you all in the morning. Same. Everybody have a good night. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep, we'll turn in. Alright, so you guys head off to bed. <laughs> Somebody is laughing at yeah, us, and Brandon's, I do not appreciate it. Brandon is laughing at something downstairs. I don't know what, though. 
something and, hilarious. Mm. Anyway, is it the it's it's cat? It's that you. kitten. I was about to say, is it the kitten? <laughs> no, it's not the kitten. He's he's doing some he's doing some work from home right now because he has some like upgrade or something to do. Oh, uh, so it's the work sure. class, it's not the. <laughs> It's not the kitten. It's not the kitten. So he's probably working with his like coworker or something, unless he's taking a break. Um, uh, I'm okay. gonna go while we're uh, while we're finishing up our long rest. I'm gonna go grab my drink out of the uh, out of the refrigerator. I promise I'll just be a second. Okay, sounds good. Okay, and you guys just rest for tonight. Okie doke. So I think that probably um, so bittersweet normally sleeps wild shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've already lost a wild shape, and they're concerned. Like they're all, they're concerned about conserving stuff, and so like they just sleep normally. Okay. And they just have horrible nightmares. Oh. Just yeah. So like anyone who is near their room can hear them like snarling and crying out in their sleep. Anyone here have calm emotions? <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs> and the the sounds that they make are in no way humanoid at all. Well, that's they're fun. Almost like they're almost one hundred percent like animal. Well, isn't that special? I am returned. Hey, Bitter Sweet's having night terrors. Oh, where are they sleeping? I don't know. Uh, probably outside. Oh. They don't like being confined. I got a drive below Tilda's window. <laughs> <sighs> It would actually probably be outside of either Melanie or Zaitari's, or Zaitari's window. <laughs> You're two of us up. <laughs> I will, if it's loud enough that I'm that I can hear it, I'll like get up. I'll be like, "Oh, Rain, I'll be back in a minute," and I head out to kind of like wake him up and just be like, "Hey, hey, you're all right. You're all right." <sighs> Uh, is it time to go yet? No, uh, you just, you sounded upset, and, uh... Oh. I... I'm sorry. No, no. I'm... I'll, I will be quiet. You don't have to be quiet. I just thought if it was a bad dream, you might not want to stay up in there. I... It happens too often for it to be convenient for anyone. If I stay close, I will move away. No, stay right here. I'm gonna go back in there. You're fine. It will uh, happen again. That's fine. As long as I know you're okay. I'm fine. Alright. Uh... And I'm gonna go get some more cuddles before we like we have to get up and go take care of everything. I'll see you later. Uh, bittersweet. Mm. What's your passive perception? Oh, probably a lot. Um, what is it? It's ten plus your like, yeah, wisdom. plus whatever your modifier. Yeah, whatever Nine. the yeah. Yeah, uh, if you um scroll down next to your perception check, there should be a a number. No, you have to. You have to turn it on. You have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's ni uh, nineteen. Okay. Um, as you're getting ready to settle back um, to sleep, uh, you hear some rustling. Oh god! And like you see some uh, some tall grass move a little bit. Mm. And are you going to react or do anything? Yeah, the, my immediate reaction is to turn into a crag cat <laughs> and to leap at it. Okay, um, roll for pounce. <laughs> I know, right? Roll for crag cat. 
which is my absolute favorite wild shape. What is a crag cat? It's from Storm King's Thunder. It is 100% canonical. It is a big mountain lion cat. Um, it cannot be targeted or detected by divination magic. What? And it has advantage on saving throws against any spell that targets only the cat. Jesus. Yeah. If the cat's saving throw succeeds and the spell is of 7th level or lower, the spell has no effect on the cat and instead targets the caster. What? What the yeah. God fuck? Damn. Yeah, they, they look like this. And... KK, you're very lucky I was going to use those things on you guys during that Bodak fight. <laughs> but I decided to get stuck. Crack cats are freaking amazing, and it's it's incredible that they are considered a beast and not a monstrosity. Yep, that's a crack cat. Holy moly. Oh, you're so fuzzy. I know. Mm -hmm. And the. And, look at his murder mittens. And so. <laughs> And so, legit, the spell turning thing is, like, their most powerful thing. They don't have tons of hit points, their armor isn't super good, their attack isn't really, like, they only get one attack. Um, like, even, they don't get a multi-attack even if they're as, you know, a, as a creature. Um, but the spell turning thing is amazing. Um, so, yeah, so I'm gonna pounce on the thing. Okay, uh, roll for pounce. Uh, so I'm not trying to hurt it. Uh, but I am going to try and catch the thing. Okay. So that's gonna be, uh, uh, plus five. Wow. wow. Okay, so you pounce on the thing, and you heard, ah! And <laughs> you have pin Deacon. Yep. Who has an empty glass in one hand, looks like some spilled milk, oh. and there is a plate of cookies that have spilled, have like, spilled oh. to the floor. <laughs> and Deacon's like, Deacon, sorry! Deacon, sorry! Deacon, sorry! I lick his face. <laughs> he, he, like, reaches over, <laughs> and he grabs a like, cookie, and he's, like, holding the cookie while you have him pinned. He's like, Deacon thought bittersweet could use cookies. Deacon, uh, sorry. <laughs> made with bittersweet chocolate chips. <laughs> <laughs> and, and bittersweet does that like kind of chuffing thing that big cats do when they're happy and curls around Deacon and puts one paw over him and goes to sleep. <laughs> Deacon doesn't move. He's just like this is your life now. Yeah, Deacon. Deacon <laughs> yeah, Deacon's face is exactly like this is my life now. And he's like, just... I'm just. I hope I'm happy where I am right now because I'm not getting out of it. Deacon, if Deacon tries to slip away at any point, Bittersweet would let him, even if even if they woke up. Okay. Um. <laughs> In the morning, <laughs> I eat. I eat a cookie off the ground at some point. <laughs> Melanie, you look outside, and there is a giant cat. And underneath the cat deep. is a little kobold who is asleep. Kept, kept <laughs> oh yeah, warm. it does last for four hours. So yeah, kept it very warm in the night. But that is exactly what you see when you wake up, because um, I assume you wake up pretty would... early. I wake up and I'm like, oh, Deacon! And I run outside <laughs> and attempt to save Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, be like, Deacon, Deacon! I I'm here to help you! And, like, I, have I don't have my arm on yet. It's just, like, just I have my, bed soul, head my, everywhere. my sword, and I'm like, ah! Deacon's like, no, Deacon, uh, stop! <laughs> and like, make an attack. <laughs> and then no, I figured make an attack. <laughs> hit me! Hit me! <laughs> oh, is that, that a bittersweet? Of these. Is that bittersweet? Because De okay. De Deacon nods. Like Deacon, Deacon, Deacon tried to. Uh, Deacon was uh, giving bittersweet food, and Deacon did not. Announce self. So, bittersweet thought Deacon was not Deacon, and Deacon was someone else. Ah, I understand. Mm -hmm. Cookie. Uh, 
damage. Absolutely, yes. Uh, if there's a <laughs> knock, I'll take the two. <laughs> and I will uh, go ahead and uh, take a cookie and munch on it and take one uh, to rain and uh, just head back inside. Yeah. Fur on the cookie? Uh, it's fur and possibly a little bit of dirt. Uh, you know, just a, a hair of... Yeah, whether or not you eat it, it's up to you. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to be offended. <laughs> Bit, bittersweet in the meantime is waking up. <laughs> Getting up, releases Deacon, and Deacon's headbutts, like, like headbutts him. Good morning, you know, him. good morning, bittersweet. <laughs> and she, uh, Deacon, will get up, and you know, just like you know, crack his back. Ow! <laughs> and just you know, pet you. <laughs> Deacon, sorry, Deacon. De- Deacon mm-hmm. didn't mean to sneak up on bittersweet. Deacon, yeah. sorry. After a second, they they unwild shape. I'm just sitting there, like, super hunched over so that Deacon's hand is still on their head. Mm-hmm. Deacon, sorry. Deacon, Deacon should have known. It's alright. I'm sorry I kept you outside all night. Eh, it, uh, Deacon thought you were very warm, so it's okay. I appreciate the thought. Uh... My, uh, Deacon's friend, Bigrin, always says cookies and milk make things better. Makes everything better. So, Deacon. I pick up a cookie and eat it. (laughs) They're chocolate chip. Good. Hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to get some breakfast? Besides cookies? (laughs) Cookies are the breakfast champion. What's the, the best breakfast? <laughs> have you oh, had? No, that, that would be cold pizza. Have you had bacon? Uh, cold Chinese. I have been bacon. Oh, um, Deacon does not know what to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Wild shape. <laughs> cut a piece of yourself off to cook it. And then... Like that's, <laughs> that's not oh, that's how. That's weird. No, that's not that, how that's it works. <laughs> I have had my sense of humor is, I think, a little bit. Bacon thought it was funny. Come on, let's get bacon. Bacon, bacon. Go inside, get bacon. Not yeah. people, bacon. <laughs> Long pig <pegged> day. <laughs> All right, so you two go get Don't breakfast. Don't eat humans, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat humans, okay? All right, and the rest of you wake up on your own accord. It's probably around six at this point, since you guys wanted to get an early start. That's perfect. Rude. <laughs> we need, I mean, we need to leave early, so... It's yeah, Lena's already up. There. She doesn't look like she got much sleep. Yeah, I kind of figured she unhappy. didn't sleep. Okay. Cool. I will find some coffee. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that even though Tilda's waking up early, it is... She's probably one of the last of us to wake up. Yep. And so I'm going to find some coffee and uh, just put it in front of her door and then knock on the door and then just leave. Just... Not not worry about poking the bear. Just giving the bear some coffee. <laughs> There's a knock on the door. <laughs> Tilda, to your room. Open the door. There's coffee. <laughs> I look up and down the hall. And then... Rain, if this is some sort of sick <laughs> trick! <laughs> it is not appreciated! And close the door. Don't take the coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we'll see when you get coffee again. Uh, I mean, if you... If Melanie had given her the coffee, just... I didn't know if you would be, like, in your morning ablutions. (laughs) So... (laughs) I gotta go polish my armor. Later, 
later Melanie will be like, so, did the coffee help? Oh! Uh, ha, ha, ha. I left you some coffee. I didn't know if you'd be busy, so I just knocked on your door and left it. I... I... Well, you really should have said something, darling. I mean, I blamed your girlfriend and didn't drink the coffee. Oh. Well. Oh, well. Just coffee. She does do that invisible thing from time to time. Yes, precisely. <clears throat> there was no one around. I assumed it was some sort of prank that you're... I don't um, know what the prank would have been. I don't know why, why giving somebody coffee would be a prank. It could have had some sort of something in it. I mean, you're she's she's an alchemist, darling. It could have been <laughs> anything. True. It's full of oil of slipperiness. Exactly. It could have been a whole <laughs> bunch of laxatives in that coffee. <laughs> Gotta lube up the insides. <laughs> <laughs> Can't catch me. <laughs> and then you're just greasy fart away. <laughs> <laughs> See? It could have been terrible. <laughs> Tilda, you would just have this horrible gassy cloud underneath your broom. Jesus! <laughs> no, stop. Yeah, I, I second that. No, stop. <laughs> okay, gross. No, I'm just sticking to Stop. <laughs> um. So, how long does it take to rub on the oil of, oil of slipperiness, and how long does it last? It's. Um, I think it takes a minute to apply. Mm -hmm. Ten and minutes. How long does it last? Ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Oh, uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't know what we're gonna be facing and when. So. It, gonna... It's uh, no. It takes ten minutes to apply, and it lasts for eight hours. Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I'll still wait. It's. I don't want to just use it willy-nilly. Yeah, same. I'm not going to use mine either. Okay. Um, you guys have breakfast and head out? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So Deacon um, will lead you to um, the fireplace. It's about three and a half hours. And when you get there, you come upon... Actually, this very nice looking, uh, it looks like part of it looks, <coughs> it, it was made out of ruins, um, but they have reconstructed the place well enough, make, make, mostly using wood, um, to make a very kind of half and half stone, half wooden, uh, large building structure, um, with more or less the shape that was shown to you that Deacon had drawn, except for the where the shrine would be, would be which is he um, thinks it's underground. Um, uh, the area is covered in uh, pine, like surrounded by pine and oak trees. There is very nice shrubbery in the, in the front like there is a uh, like two sets of boxwood bushes um a few crocuses that are starting to poke up from the ground some of the crocus flowers have died already because they are an early spring flower um it is overcast out outside right now it looks like it might rain today um, being spring, very common. And you see a few among the oak and oak, pine, and elm trees. You do see a couple wild uh, fruit trees, a uh, couple crab apples, a couple possibly pear trees. Um, and there is a cart that's not currently hooked up to anything outside. It looks like it is parked under a makeshift um, 
type of bare minimum a tent for four uh, sticks as pillars and a big tarp across from it and the sticks are tied with um with string and some pitons um nailed to the ground um yeah it's and there is smoke coming from the the chimney um near the back or the kitchen area would be um but it looks very homey um everybody roll a perception check for me Woo, I don't see shit. Thank God. Um, Tilda, Rain, and Melanie. As soon as the building came into view, into view, you have this creeping sensation in the back of your head. It's not. It's not quite intruding um you have to really concentrate it um you have to really concentrate to actually figure out hey there's something going on here to notice it but it's it's there the others don't seem to know about it my brain is full of turmoil on a good day <laughs> I don't notice anything. Um, I'm just rolling this to see if I got it. Like, okay, I have my sheet set up like I want it now. Um, I'm going nice, to... Uh, nice one, Tilda. That's uh, not me. Hmm? That's not me. No. no, you rolled a one for your portrait. Oh, okay. Yes, that was me. That's super handy. Yeah, yes, that's a nice I'm one. I'm going to uh, kind of point the, out the weird feeling to everyone what it feels like a kind of a creeping sensation in the brain is mm -hmm. that what you said yeah just like it, it's just creeping out it's not invasive it's not a disturbing force it doesn't feel like it's disturbing um but it's like there's something there kind of like more like something brushing against you than bleeding into you very similar yes mm -hmm. i don't like it um, how far are we when we feel this th when from the, the area? So when the fireplace came into view, it's about you'll prob you you start seeing it about two hundred feet away. So maybe about hundred fifty within the structure. Then you start feeling it. If this is uh from the fey creature, it is. Surprisingly far to have such an effect. Elena will say it. It didn't. The aura last time I was here didn't reach this far. You would have to be within twenty-five feet of the house, roughly, to start feeling something like this. But this is this is a lot. The range is a lot more than I was expecting. Um, she has given you guys the break. She's already ra wearing her necklace. Um, and she says this should dampen the stronger effects once we get closer. And Deacon is, says, <sighs> yeah, well, um, I need to, Deacon needs to get going. Um, Deacon's very sorry, but, um, Deacon, Deacon should have left last night, but Deacon, Deacon needs to hustle now. Um. Well, De good travels, Deacon. Thank you for your aid. Well, yes, good luck w with what you're doing, Deacon. Indeed. Thank you. Like I said, if you need any help, just send us a quick message. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll come and help us again. <laughs> Deacon, Deacon will, um, Deacon will ask for help if Deacon needs it. Um, good luck. To all of you, Deacon knows you'll be fine. And with that, uh, Deacon is going to wave, and then he will begin to cast, and he will disappear. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, <sighs> says Elena. Well, you guys had to do some powerful magic for a kobold, yeah. you know. Indeed. Bittersweet is just like standing with their the heel of their hand, like pressing against one eye and just sort of swaying. Are you all right, darling? I don't like anything being in my head, but. No, I understand it's not pleasant. Uh, does the amulet help mitigate? Uh, yes. Um, it does. <laughs> Shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, before Tegan left, could he- did he give us a description of what the key looked like? Uh, that... it was a white crystal. Um, okay. kind of a, uh, I guess in a long diamond shape? Um, and it's white. Just as long as it's enough for it, it's, Bittersweet to go off of for... Yeah, he'll describe it in more detail if you ask him. It's, um, it's roughly shaped like this. It's on a silver chain. Um, it is about... <laughs> The key, the key lengthwise itself is about three inches long. Um, it's the plumb bob from The Sims. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at the color and know how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. White, I guess it would be platinum, huh? So, mm. pretty good. They're feeling real good. Must have just had a baby. Um, and the chain, and the ch anyways, and the chain is a plain chain. It's a silver plain chain. There's nothing else on it. A plain Jane plain chain? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. A plain Jane chain? <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Very nice, all of you. Okay. I'm clapping. But yeah, that's the description he gives. <laughs> now, with locate object, can you cast it and it'll pick up both of the keys? And not just one of the keys. Yeah, well, I guess we'll have to find out. Because I'm not exactly sure what the specifics are. Uh, I, am... I just knew it was a spell, and I wanted to <clears throat> ask if... Uh, okay, quick question for everybody. Are yeah. we using Arcane Eye at all today? Was that part of the plan? I don't um, think so. I don't think, that, I don't think so. Okay, I'm not going to prepare it then. That's okay. fine. just fine. But I do have locate object. So, uh, given a sufficient description of the um, of the key, uh, uh, Bittersweet will say, "Just let me know what you want to search. What you want me to search for it." Do you want to be closer, or shall we do it now? See if there are... I mean, the cart is there, so in theory they're both in the building. That's well, not something, right? I mean... In theory, they should definitely both be there. But, um... I don't know, how long does it last, Bittersweet? I believe it's ten minutes. Uh, yep. Up to, up to ten minutes. Okay. Well... I say, why don't we do it now? It's a fairly low-level spell. We can see if we get anything from here, and if we don't, then we proceed with our plan. Um, we can get into the portable hole. Um, uh, Bittersweet can keep in communication with Rain through the uh, pendants after um, they have wild shape and they can infiltrate the compound. What are you wild shipping us? Uh, something small, so probably either a pigeon or a hummingbird. Oh, so you can do flying, that's handy. Yeah, I can. I think a hummingbird would be cool. Mm. That's just me, though. But obvious, that's the problem. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think a pigeon would make more sense. Or like a sparrow oh. or something. Sparrow would work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could be a sparrow. I'm partial to a pigeon, though, because someone brought a pigeon in yesterday. 
or not yes uh, yeah yesterday and when they were on the uh yeah it was it was really good you're rats with wings <laughs> they're beautiful. i was going to uh suggest like an insect but i don't know if you can go that tiny with wild shape well, I mean, they're considered beasts. It's up to it's up to Darrod at that point. Okay, because I I know that like wild shape has restrictions based on your level, and I didn't know if that was like one of them. If you could you could not go that small or anything like that. No, it's just it just has to be a beast. Mm. I mean, I think in theory you could be a flea. It would just be not that useful. Yeah. Mm. Unless you that wanted to make someone itchy. Yep. Um, I mean, I'd let you do it, but you have to take in consideration the, um, the world viewed from the viewpoint of an ant, for example, is going to be very yeah. different than something yeah, yeah. Very like true. a small bird. Um, and, put, and you also have to consider the movement as well. You're not going to get very far unless you're like traveling on like rain or something. Um, <laughs> and Just there's hang a on. And there's a chance of being stepped on. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I have had a fly stuck in the house before, and that fucker followed me from room to room, and I couldn't <laughs> catch it. <laughs> so. I mean. Um, but I think a sparrow makes the most sense. Yeah. Just a, a really unassuming little bird. Okay. A normal ass sparrow that would be enjoying the garden. Yep. All right. Um, all right. So you got you're going sparrow, and rain's going invisible. Yeah. Okay. And we're doing locate object first, mm -hmm. so that we can have the concentration going for uh, the wild shape. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so why can't I just have all my spells prepared? Why? <laughs> the, uh, the struggle of prepared casters. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Spontaneous casters don't get as many spells. I know. Sorcerers get so little too, man. I forgot yep. how little they get. You trade every as a sorcerer, you trade in all of your spells for the chance to get wings. True. Yeah. <laughs> the the chance to get what? Wings. Wings. I can't wait till level oh. fourteen. And also, meta magics are pretty. pretty meta magics really yeah. dope. Um. Okay. So you will concentrate what is the name of the object you are giving it. What object are you saying you want okay. to locate? Um, or describe or the acronym. object. Yeah, Whichever you can, one yeah. you want. I, yeah, I'm going to describe the object as it has been described to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in deacon terms. <laughs> um, in the three inch crystal key. Hopefully there's not a bunch of those. So right. I am, so, well, so I am, so I... The way I describe it as a diadem on a chain. Okay. You get one uh, location. It is. Or not a diad, not a diadem, a fucking diamond. There you go. There you go. Like a diamond-shaped crystal. Okay. Yeah. Currently, the object is not in motion. Um. The direction of the object. Uh, where would you be? We're outside. You're right outside now. where you first yeah. saw the. Okay. Um, the direction is going slightly northeast from where you are. So if Away the, com from the compound. Well, uh, okay. If the compound. Is right in front of you. Let's pretend the compound's north so we can make this easy. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and you're looking directly at it. Uh, it is no The object is currently northeast and it is not in motion. Okay. I uh, will relay this to Rain telepathically. Mm. Squeak, 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 squigger, squeak, squeak. <laughs> squeak, squeak. I don't speak sparrow. <laughs> Squick, squick em. All right. squick em. Um, what is that font from? It's from The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, okay. The, only one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> I just couldn't remember. How dare you. Okay. Oh, is it when he's All talking right. to the little critter? 
Yeah. Yes, when he's yeah, talking to the squirrels. squirrels. Yes. The squirrel scouts. Mm -hmm. Also, Sorry. he's burning his spinach puffs. Yeah. <laughs> My spinach puffs. Sorry. Quickly examine our ways of entry. Is it just, just the one or? Just the one. Well, I will move up to it and examine it for traps. Okay. Uh, roll investigation. I'm hopping along behind her. Fluttering. Tweet, tweet, bitch. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the door does not appear trapped. Uh, fun fact, um, Caw Caw Motherfucker comes from Homestuck, not from the Avengers fandom. Well, All right. if you say so. It's it happened years before Avengers came out. Don't try me on this. I can <laughs> honestly say I never knew where that originated from. I just knew Caw Caw Same here. I just knew it, it was used in the Avengers. Yeah. So, Rain, yeah, yeah, uh, well, what are you doing? Oh my I god. Try to... Stop it with the birds with arms! Uh. <laughs> Freaking boats. Uh, can I make a perception check to see if I hear anything beyond the door? Yes, of course. The first instance of Caw Caw Motherfucker, right there. Okay. Um, there's some movement behind the door. It sounds like somebody's walking past. Um, and then you, s you sit there and listen for a little longer, and you don't hear anything else. Oh, what the fuck? I would like to try to gently crack the door and uh, in that process see if it's locked you know okay great um as you are opening checking the lock checking the lock and Boy. seeing if it is indeed lock um you do fail to no no it, it it's, it's <laughs> locked it's locked oh my god you're giving me a fucking heart attack <laughs> <laughs> It is and I'm like trying to sew in my ends on this hat. I stab <laughs> myself. The the door the door is locked. All right, I'll just tell her. I think, okay, it's locked. Uh, to everyone, so I'm gonna try to open it. Okay. And I will try to open it. All right. Um, roll these tools. Okay. You successfully open that lock. That's my minimum roll now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow, really? Damn. Yep. You fiddle with the tools and there is a click. Uh, and you think you have successfully gotten the door open. Rogues are bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really more the gloves of thievery. Just adding that yeah. shit close by. Mm. Though it's still pretty bad. Um, okay, I will uh, attempt to do what I just did and just, you know, Gently Only certain. crack it open. Okay, you gently crack it open. And... Gently pushed by the wind. Yep, mm. exactly. Didn't latch. Uh, you gently open. You gently open the door. Just a crack, and there is a slight ringing sound. Mm. And as ah. you look up, it appears the door. It's not loud. You just cracked it open a little bit, so it, the the trigger it's with like the a doorbell. Bell, yeah, it's like one of those shopkeep bells. Mm. Like when you open the door and there's like a like rings letting the shopkeep know that there's somebody at the door. But it rings just slightly uh, and you just catch it as you're looking up and it's like, oh shit, there's a bell up there. Mm. I guess that investigation was a little bit too low, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, quickly, I quickly flutter in through the door. Yeah, okay. I'm like hop in. Let's hop in. And as, you, as you're hopping in... There was a bell. And I might go south quick, but I go in. Uh, okay, you go and in. You do hear footsteps coming back. I'm just gonna, like, put myself in a corner. Mm -hmm. you know? I just hop under a table. Okay, you hop under a table. Uh, I need you to roll a stealth check. Um, bittersweet. And rain to probably roll with advantage, because you with got... With a sparrow. Um, you're you're freaking you're freaking invisible. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can find. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like making disgusting noises. 
Uh, let me see if I can noise. find something that, uh... You could probably just use a crow. Yeah, yeah I'd use a crow, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. raven, whatever that stat block is, because I know they yeah, have that for familiars, yeah. so... Okay, no, um, so it's gonna be plus two. Come on, roll well. Why can't we have a dodecahedron? Mm. I mean, <laughs> no. worst case scenario, oh. they're like, why is there a bird in here? Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean... <laughs> everyone starts trying to catch the bird. They like, like, <laughs> flutter up into you, the rafters. So, yeah. you see, um... A a kid. Uh looks like human. Uh about fourteen years old maybe with um uh short blonde hair, um has a tooth missing in the front. He looks at the door, is like oh, I thought I heard something. Uh looks around and sees a sparrow under a table. Birdie. And he says, Ah, how did you get here? Uh, <laughs> and he's looking around. Oh, what do I do? Um, Tilt my head at him. Um, mm. all right. He's gonna... He throws the door wide open. The bell rings again. And he is going to try to maneuver you as best <laughs> he can to go out the door. Uh, I, we all know how well that works. We I, fly, I fly up into the rafters. And he's just like, oh, come on! <laughs> uh, uh, he's, and at this point, he's gonna go... Um, you see him go around the corner. You hear a door open and shut. And then you hear it open again, like, a few seconds later. And this time, he's got a broom. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's like, come on, come on, come on, out, out, out. I am going to lead this, I'm going to lead this boy on a merry chase. <laughs> all the while, all the while, I have locate object going. Okay. And trying to see if I can, from your just, just fluttering around like a panicked bird. <laughs> okay, um, from and your the, position. I'm more or less following the bird. Okay, from your position, um, so you're near the entrance. Uh, the ping, and we're gonna pretend like this whole compound, you know, you're still in, this is compound is north, quote unquote. Um, yeah. It is still northeast from where you mm -hmm. are. Um, so you're rounding the corner. The the, the boy is like, oh, come, what, come on, I'm trying to help you. Don't make me get, don't <laughs> I've get. I've never tried to catch a bird before. <laughs> uh, he... Oh, I have chased parakeets. Not parakeets. What are those? Budgies. I yeah, chased budgies. a budgie through a pet store one time when I was working there, and he got Oof. out, and I had to, like, walk behind him so I didn't startle him, and then, like, dive down. That little fucker's fast. <laughs> budgies. <laughs> and he bit me all the way back to the cage. Budgies are incredibly sinister, and I hate them. I'm sorry. They're, they're horrible. And people are like, oh, I want that one. And I'm like, I get a blue one. And they're like, no, the blue one with the, with the, with the red eyes and demon horns. Like, that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the same goddamn bird. And then I have to dig around in there for the blue bird that has the green line on its beak. Anyways. I'm sorry for your bird trouble. The salty about birds club. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, so this, this kid is trying to... And you're you're going towards the um, the object. So this kid is trying mm. to like he's not trying to hurt you, but he's just trying to herd you out, and he's yeah. becoming increasingly frustrated with you. Uh, he's like, "Come, oh, please, please." Um, how oh, by the want him. cats? <laughs> um, so at this point, you're in front of where the dorm would dorm room would be, and the pinging is coming from the east. Okay. Um, so it's so somewhere somewhere in the dorm. So I so I say, uh, rain. It's in the dorm uh, dormitory somewhere. I think or the lounge. I am going to lead this boy away now. 
<laughs> tweet, 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 bitch. And I head back into the main room. <laughs> so you're going back to the entrance, or are you going? Are you chasing him around the the building? No, I'm going. I'm going back to the entrance. I'm going to find another way in. Okay. He's just like, go, go. Okay, thank, thank. Okay, so he's he's trying to get you out mm -hmm. uh, towards the entrance. Um, but instead of going out through the completely wide open door, I go and sit on the sill of a window and start fluttering at the window. <laughs> <laughs> he, you hear an audible slap come from like behind you as he's just like one hand face palm. It's like I can't fucking believe this. Um, and he's slowly going to this go is too to much the realism for my fantasy game. <laughs> He's going to slowly attempt to go to the window and open it. <laughs> mm -hmm. like um, with the broom handle trying to open it. Yeah, he's like, and come it, on, come on. The okay. door's still open, too, so if you're fast. Yeah, the door's still open there. Uh, and I sit on the windowsill for, like, an uncomfortable 15 seconds. <laughs> and then I hop outside. Fly right back in the door. Fly right back in the door. <laughs> okay, uh, Rain, you are in front of the dormitory while this is happening. I would like to see if I can find a chimney. You did see smoke coming out of a chimney, but there's smoke coming yeah. out of a chimney. <laughs> oh, okay. Can I find there a Maybe you don't want to. I mean, there can is I find a an gardens. open window? <laughs> yeah, there's an open window. Well. The door is wide open. Win... I know, but I want yeah, to find an open window right in there. the dorm. In the, like, in you the dorm or the see... lounge area. Okay. Um, there are windows around the dorm and the lounge area. The flying game would also be very realistic okay. as well. <laughs> So I'm well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go find a window in the dorm and see if I get a ping that's leading me north. Okay. Uh, you get to the window of the dorm and you do indeed have a ping that's leading you north. So straight, um, straight, straight north as opposed well. to east. Okay. Oh, well, what are you doing, Ryan? Going into the dorms. Okay. Is it like is it like a closed door? Or it's a, it there's like a, a closed there, a room? There's a closed door in front in um between you and the dorm. Rain, I think it's in the dormitory and not in the lounge. Interesting. Okay, can you... Where are you? If you could open I'm... this window once you were in the room, I would be greatly appreciated. I do not have thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's you why see... you should be a bird with arms! Come on, man! I don't think... Do you see anyone in there? Do I see anyone in there? Ah, uh, the curtains are closed. The curtains are closed. Well. Can I see if there's a window on the other side? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you flutter yeah. over and there is indeed a window on the other side. Are the curtains also closed? Yes. Curtains are closed <laughs> on both sides. Alright. Um, I'm gonna perception check again. Mm-hmm. For noise, and if there's enough of a gap, look under the door. Okay. Um, you hear voices coming from beyond the door. Uh, it sounds like there are mm, several people talking. at least a couple people in there. Uh, does the door open uh, in or out? Uh, the door opens in. Rain, do you want me to create a distraction? I think you could make some noise on one side and then maybe... Uh, yeah. Let's try that, and I'll try to slip in. Just tell me when you start. I'm channeling Bren when I say fire is distracting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. So I am going to... Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go over to... Uh, this... Wi uh, whichever, whichever window is furthest away from the door this one right over here. Yeah, they're both about equidistant. Okay. And so I am going to just start uh, just pecking and fluttering and scratching and at the window. Okay. As, like, as hard as I can. 
Um, when you uh, start pecking at the window, the curtains fly open. So like as and... soon as I start to hear that, I'm going to try to open the door. If it doesn't open, unlock it and open. Okay. Um, it, the curtains fly open, and there is a 10-year-old little girl uh, with, black, uh, with black hair uh, and pigtails and a black eye. Um, oh. like, looking oh. at you, like, and then opens the window. <laughs> <laughs> and when you fly into, in, into the room, hold on. Rain, I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you to us. open the window anymore. <laughs> um, do you see a woman, um, older? Uh, with long red hair. Uh, you see two other people. Uh, there's a boy that looks like he's about seven. Um, with like a... It, it looks like he, if somebody put a bowl on his head and you just used a bowl as a, as a guideline to cut his hair, that's exactly uh, what he looks like. Bowl bowl cut. Cut. Is his name Mandark? <laughs> Mandark Darkman? <laughs> Anyways, there's also an 11 year old girl in here. 11 year old girl in here with um, strawberry blonde hair and uh, plenty of freckles. Uh, she's lanky as uh, oh, hell, too. Um, and they're like very perplexed. So, what are you doing once you fly in? Um. I just fly up to the highest place that I can. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, now they're trying to get you down. Like, what the... <laughs> um, and Rain, you are I'm, trying I'm to get trying it. To, yeah, I'm trying to communicate there are two children here. Three. There are three children here. <laughs> have, one of them, at least, has been hit. There is a woman with long red hair. Does she look like a half elf? Yes. She is half elven. She matches the description of the woman Deacon told us. Gemma, the signal right? to her. Yeah, Gemma. <clears throat> so I'm gonna like try and keep them distracted over on one side of the room. Okay. And then it's doing like if it opens, just like you know, uh, much, just as much to get my body through it, and then closing up behind me. Okay, so roll a stealth check to. No, roll a sleight of hand check. I I'm gonna make it sleight of hand because you're manipulating an object to get inside a room. Makes sense. Um, while you're doing that, Gemma will start to cast. Oh no. And cast fly. <laughs> <laughs> she do it on herself or one of the kids. So she she does it on herself. Okay. And she doesn't she doesn't try to attack you or anything. She's trying to coax you um like toward the open window. Okay. Um, Excellent. I've made her waste a spell slot. <laughs> <laughs> yes you have. Um does my locate object ping at her? Towards her, yes. Right. Um, and she's trying to, and you know, you hear the children below call, you know, don't, don't, don't hurt him, and 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 you hear her say, no, no, I'm, I'm just going to try it. Come on, come on. Um, and he's, Gemma has the key, and she's going to attempt to like usher you towards the window while Rain is sneaking in. So I need to roll a couple things. Pretend to be wounded, and then she'll try to fix you, and Rain can take the key while she's distracted. Uh, fly into a wall really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have that many okay, let's, become, let's, let's uh, go back into a fear bolt. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, so... I have one hit point. <laughs> Alright, so nobody notices. Here is a fear bolt and... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody notices. No, nobody seems to notice you, Rain, as you slip in quietly um, past the door. Um, and you see uh, a red-headed woman trying to coax Why? a uh, sparrow out a window. You see uh, three <laughs> children 
um, calling up towards this woman not to hurt the creature. Do I see a chain on her neck? Um, from where you are, I'm trying to remember what she's wearing. One sec. Please let it just be like on a desk or something, like on a side table. No, it's <laughs> on her. It's yeah. on I her, know, but yeah. wouldn't it be amazing if she had just it taken would. it off for some reason? Like we don't know. Like, you you see with um or something? I don't know. So Bittersweet sees the chain. You don't see the key. So the chain is Back. probably underneath her, sh like tucked uh, beneath her shirt. shirt. Yeah. Mm. And she's You're flying good. right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make an intelligence check for Bittersweet to see if they're smart enough to think about being in injured. Okay. That's... No. <laughs> I start panicking for real. <laughs> <laughs> he, and, you know, she's like, okay, come on, come oh. on. Nope, 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 not that way. Th this way, this way. Th nope, not... Oh, jeez. <laughs> I... I let her catch me. Okay. So she catches you. She's just going to put me outside. Yeah. yeah so and, like, and she's flying. I like, I, yeah, I like mime flying against the wall or, or something. I just like give her a second where she can catch me. Okay. It's not a person. I just might have to shadow her. And I'm thinking this over the brooch to mm -hmm. everyone. I might just have to shadow her until she takes what? it off or she goes to sleep. Aren't we in the, are we in the portable hole? Oh, you, that you guys can, we didn't really. No. No, we didn't. We no one ever went into the portable hole. Oh, okay. Then we're outside then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What can I do? How can I distract? So she has you like cupped in her hands, and she's trying very <laughs> carefully not to hurt you, as she's leading you Bite towards her. the window. Bite the fuck out of her. <laughs> and do a massive one d one piercing damage. <laughs> Well, it's a guaranteed one. Hmm. No, she, she cannot be a porg. I I just and saw then... that. No, fuck no. <laughs> you can be a fucking puffin, which those things are based off of. <laughs> no porg. Porgs are cute. <laughs> They're so adorable. I'm, I just I'm wanted to punch to... them. I'm gonna what have to disagree. Uh, I, I don't think porgs are cute. <gasps> Sorry. No, no, it's okay. As long as you don't want to punt them. <laughs> yeah, I, nothing mean, I, mean, you. <laughs> I don't feel anything. I don't feel strongly about them one or the way or the other. I just don't think they're cute. Okay, okay that's no fine. Yeah, that's way. To punt them. <laughs> Anyways, stupid porks. Jesus. So she's she's yeah. so she's carrying you to the window, and you're like struggling a little bit, but she's she's a person. You're a bird. Uh -oh. So she just drinks Jack as a bird. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm if sorry. you want to do it, it's fine. We can do this, but your strength <laughs> check is probably like negative. Six. Like a strength, of a chair, strength check at minus four. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. It's a dex check, damn it. <laughs> oh, <it's a> <laughs> <laughs> damn. Um. Oh. That's one of those birds with a human arm. No, <laughs> you get you get away. <laughs> can I try? Can I try and pull her? Pull the chain off her neck. Ooh, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be another strength check. Like I'm not even trying. I'm not even necessarily trying to break the chain. I'm just trying to get it out of her. You're trying to get it out of her shirt. All right. Um, yeah. I, I would. I would. Yeah. There was a there's a strength check um, involved in this. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a shiny object. It makes some imagine. kind of sense. <laughs> She's not a freaking crow or a magpie. <laughs> no, but the uh, what's her face? Gemma doesn't know. Twelve. Okay. Necessary. Um, but she successfully like shoves you. Like, no, back, back, back. Um, I'm gonna see if oh. she accidentally hits you. Oh shit. And she's waving her hands like kind of aimlessly towards you. So I'm gonna give a chance for that to happen. Oh um, man, this is how things go bad. So I'm so thinking of a percentage in my head. It's pretty okay. low. The younglings rain? Okay. Uh she does she doesn't accidentally hit you. 
But yes. she she successfully bats you away. Okay, I get battered away and I flutter towards the open window. Okay. I, did I manage to pull the chain out? You did not. A 12 is really strong for a person. It is spell, very strong, but she's a person. She's a person. Okay. I mean, that's pretty valid. I, I'm with the DM yeah. on this. <laughs> all right, all right. I tried. I mean, if I you tried, were a parrot right. or something, maybe. A swan. No, that's Come up with better. I go and, t- I go and <laughs> perch on the window, so. Okay. All right, Rain, what are you doing while this camaraderie is happening? It's like <laughs> moving a- around like the commotion and I'm looking for like an inn, but I can't imagine that I see one. Not you know? really. It's like, mm, let me just double check my bag of tricks here. I don't think I have anything. We should have given you, have you a- the, uh, <laughs> we should have given you the iron flask. So you just fucking put her in it. <laughs> Can we give Rain an actual literal bag of tricks? No. We used to have one, but then we gave it to um, a halfling ranger we used to adventure with. Um, because the ability to toss out a bear. Yeah. The iron flask <laughs> only works for things that aren't from this plane, and this person's from this plane, is aren't they? No, uh, they might not be. <laughs> Just saying. It's worth a try. <laughs> Just like the iron flask, like hits her shoulder and nothing happens. Like, <laughs> just throw it at her. Eh. <laughs> okay. Rain, so, that's not even how it works. So Rain, you, so you're not finding an opening. Is there anything else you want to do? No, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna try to follow her around. What what she's doing? Okay. I'm just gonna have to. Oops, she makes a mistake. Okay. Um. So you are currently bittersweet perched on the windowsill. Yes. Um, Rain, so after she successfully gets the bird out, are you outside on the perch or are you inside the windowsill? I'm inside the windowsill, but if she shoes at me outside, I'm going, I will go outside. All right, she will, sh- she will attempt to shoo you outside. Okay, I'd go outside. Okay, you go outside, she shuts the window. Jokes on you, bitch! I'll have thumbs later. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "All right." Uh, and now that you are in in the same vicinity as her, um, uh, she's like, she's like to the kids, "Okay, let's go get some dinner, huh?" And the kids will follow her towards the I kitchen it was like dining noon. room area. Well, sorry, breakfast. Uh, it's nine ish, so ten. Lunch. Yeah, let's get some lunch. <laughs> okay, all right. Brunch. I was just making sure that I did know that it was the right time of day. Early because yeah, we left. We probably left around seven six thirty. Yeah. yeah. So it took three and a half hours. So it it would be early lunch. Yeah. If uh, we we're deciding to go eat. Yeah. So she's headed towards the kitchen with three kids in tow. It's brunch, guys. Second uh, second breakfast. Only a breakfast Sunday. Second sort breakfast. Of breakfast sort it takes of a while breakfast. to get those kids up and gotta get them washed. Yeah. And everything, you know. yeah. Oh, they seem pretty obedient. Um, I'm sure they are. And, you know, she's smiling and she brings them to the kitchen and she starts making them um, sandwiches. <sighs> you get a close look at their um, icebox, Rain. And there are um, containers in there. And you notice that there are containers lying the entire kitchen, other than your typical kitchen, you know, sink and cabinets. There are these very large clay urns um, over one side of the wall. And they have kind of a sheepskin covering over them. And they're tightly tightly bound at the top. Burial urns. Mummy urns. Um, but yeah, she sits down with them and she chats uh, with them for a while. It sounds like uh, they are going to do some uh, not uh, tending in the field 
in the and when you look outside the kitchen window there is like a nice sizable plot of um where you would grow crops but it sounds like today they'll probably be tilling that uh plot of land to start growing to plant things to grow for this uh coming for this spring so they plan on gardening and they're eating lunch going with them yeah she'll be with them um, it sounds sounds like these individuals are new. Uh, so she'll, she sounds like she's going through the daily chores with them. Okay, I'd say the children we saw that she was with, uh, they seem to be new recruits. Uh, she's giving them the rundown of how things work here, and they're going to be gardening outside later. That might be a chance for us to do something with more options than I have here. I'll continue to watch. I can stab her! (laughs) (laughs) I'm just imagining, like, uh, just going honey badger in the field, just like, (laughs) I was considering turning into a raccoon in in the night and sneaking in and taking the necklace. That's not a bad idea. You should yeah, they do have opposable I, I thumbs. Still, I still <laughs> think that we could just forget the necklace and just stone shape our way into that room, guys. Just throw that out there. Well, d- uh, I can't say anything over the brooch, so to, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody's keeping me apprised of what's happening. Um, yeah, you're right next to Melanie and Tilda, so. Yeah. All right. Um, since it doesn't seem we're going to be able to get that crystal off of her. Maybe, uh, can Rain see if she can get into uh, Octay's office? Rain, darling, do you think you could get into Octay's office? Um, I haven't been led anywhere near there yet, right? No. So, I can, I can try and see what happens. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, tell her to be careful for magical traps. If you want to open a window... Zaytari says be careful for magical traps. Yes, uh, the magical traps I cannot say. Yes, I will be very careful. Rain, will you please open a window? (laughs) I'm stuck outside again. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Can I I find the, the quietest corner to open a window in? Yeah, you can find a pretty quiet corner. I will say that. I mean, they left the they left the dorm. So. Yeah, they did lift the door, leave the dorm open. All right, so yeah, I'll roll rendezvous back in the dorms. Um, those are young checks to be made, and I'll open a window. Okay, bittersweet. My... Come to my window. Come inside. Boy, this is Boy, really by the light of the moon. Should I? Would you like to carry me? Levitating sparrow. I don't know <laughs> just, just floating so through the halls. If you're holding a thing, and you if you're holding a thing, it becomes invisible. I imagine if I tuck you um, inside a pocket. Yep. Yeah. I will fit in a pocket. <laughs> okay. Just in there with all my thieves' tools. <laughs> Yep, you're surrounded by thieves' tools. We have many interesting instruments in here. It really, it's all in the hands. But um, is there any pocket bacon? I pecked at a crumb. There, there is the cookie from this morning is still. In there. Oh, I'm going ham on that cookie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so you get the at least until, at least until crumbs we- now. At least, in, well, at least until we get out of the dorm, and then I stay quiet and still. Hey, sweet boy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're... Tell Luke we said hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. My hands are busy, and I can't mute myself, and he's a good boy and needs to be told that. Yeah. I should all anything. agree. Seconded, oh, he everyone. brought me a toy. Oh, no, he's just gonna play with it by Seconded. himself. <laughs> He he the toy. Oh, I'm getting some very firm headbutts, aren't I? Thank you. So you're in front of Octi's office. <laughs> I will investigate for traditional traps. Okay. 
and bells. I mean, you know, you might notice uh, arcane runes or something out of place. It could happen. Okay. Mm. You want to? I am maybe... going to use a luck. Okay. Choice. <laughs> oh, Great. Awesome. Ten out of ten. Um. I'm really feeling that uh, expertise coming next level. <laughs> the door does not appear to be trapped. Yeah, you can grab expertise when we level up again in November. Uh, could, uh, could potentially maybe, uh, d uh, uh, bittersweet? What? <laughs> See if, uh, they notice anything? <laughs> I'm eating a cookie, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a pocket. I tried. Um, I tried. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. Um. How far away are the rest of us? <laughs> We're uh, about a hundred and some odd feet away. Yeah. Oh. This is why I wanted to be inside so I can help Rain. I am going. You're in a pocket. No, I'm but I can. Around. I can very I quickly the not be in a pocket. Okay. <laughs> and I think to her, um, I don't see anything. I'm going to try to open it. I'm going to be really careful this time for any bills. But if there's anything else, I'm going to need your help because the only thing I do is. You know what I do. But, um, if we have to make a run for it, just go. I can get myself out. You can move faster than I can, so... Just, if I say go, run. Don't question it like some people. <laughs> like oh, some nice. people. Some people are still salty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was a directed thought. You guys out here, this. <laughs> and I'm... I'm just gonna put a hand on the uh, handle, mm -hmm. floor handle. Wait for any reaction. Okay. And then try to gently turn it. Okay. The door does not appear to be locked. Well, fuck. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly press my ear against it and listen. I realize I forgot to step <laughs> Alright, bro perception check. Uh, you do not hear any sounds coming from beyond the door. Can I roll a perception check as well? Yes. Because I'm now out of the pocket. Fuck. You do not hear anything as well. Push the door open. Okay. Uh, just enough to get it to look in. Like, to, to what, you know, push whatever little bit I get. And okay. Uh, you see... Slowly, you know, crane the head in. All right, you see what appears to be a office with a bed in it. Um, it is sparsely furnished. Um, there are a few... There's a... Like, one of those uh, cork boards with little notes posted on it with thumbtacks. Um, there's the bed, there's the office, but you're, like, just peeking in from that air, so I'm not... Okay. So that's what and you see when you crack it open. I kind of like, wait a second, I'm listening for a reaction, right? You know, fireball coming at my face. Nope. <laughs> and, uh, if it does, I, I open it enough to get myself in. Okay. I would like you to roll a constitution check, please, as you step <laughs> on a pressure plate. It's a one of those long oh. rectangular pressure plates. A check or a save? Uh, constitution save. I'm sorry. Ooh. Okay. <sighs> you are nice. fine as... <laughs> oh, dear. You're going to hate me for this. Oh, boy. Oh, Maybe. boy. Let me get to... I mean, and... if it's magical sleep, that doesn't do shit. There is a yellow, nauseating glass that starts to fill the room. Gas, not Grab, glass. I, gas. Sorry. A, <laughs> I, I um, pull the bird into the room and shut the door. <laughs> you pull the wait. You pull the bird into the room, or you pull the bird out oh, of the room. 
I'm outside. It's filling up that much? Wait. Okay, wait. You're all yeah, it's filling okay, up no, the room. Gonna... Yeah, it's filling up the office. <sighs> okay, yeah, we're out of here. Okay. Um, so there's a the yellow abort. gas abort. filling up yeah, the room. Abort. You shut the door behind you, and you abort. <laughs> I'm heading for the front door. Okay. As unless, you... unless I think I can squeeze out of the dorm window. I don't know how big they are. Um, I mean, the front door is closed. Um, you, there's still that bell. Yeah, um, the windows I'm... are big enough for you to crawl through. I'm gonna go I out. I wonder if I could have. I, I can turn into. I can turn into something that can hold their breath. There's got to be something. An octopus. <laughs> Well, it can hold its breath for ten minutes. It I'm can. just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing though is on traps is like, <clears throat> unless it's a specific stat thing in the block, is like holding your breath doesn't actually help on things uh, with an AL. Oh. I, remember, um, I think I remember reading that somewhere, but that might not be true either. You know? Well, we at least know what the room looks like now. As you're going through the dormitory, um, roll a per uh, con uh, not con uh, roll a perception check for me. Both of you. Oh boy. Okay. Don't like that. Uh. Come on. Okay. All right. You don't hear it, Rain. You hear it. Coming from behind this. Yeah. Coming, select. Uh, coming from behind this door, you hear somebody screaming in pain. And two other voices, like, berating them. I keep going. Okay. okay. Um, so you guys, uh, you guys, uh, get outside. And I assume sound you're like heading. A kid. Yeah, sound like a kid. Ryan, we should go back in. We will. But... Just when everybody's in the purple hole. <laughs> we have to go. We need help. Um. I don't know about that, baby. <laughs> As long as we go back. That's what we're here for. I can be there with one other person in about two rounds. A little can... less than two rounds. Yeah, I can, like I said, I have Dimension Door. I can get myself and one other person, which is going to be Melanie. I know um, that it sounds harsh, but the truth is, I mean, this, whatever's happening now has probably happened before. And it would be better if we were to go in the dead of night, try to get into that shrine room, and take care of things once and for all. Uh, if we go in haphazardly, we're possibly going to cause more harm than good. Okay. How you can tell I'm not playing Bryn right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys head back to the group. Yeah. Could have been there in one round if I didn't have to grab anybody. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we don't know what Elena can do necessarily. She might be able to get herself in quickly as well. Mm. Which I'm going to ask her while they're on their way back. Okay. Hey. Elena. Yes. What do you do? What yeah. do I do? <laughs> like what what can you do? What can I like, do? Like what the fuck do you offer to this group? Damn. <laughs> Did she uh, bring you... that wand of fireballs we know she has? The one the cast level nine fireballs? <laughs> <laughs> um actually, Zaitari, you've seen what she can do. I was about to say, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I have seen All right, what she can so what can you... she get around quickly? She can get around quickly. Um you know that Elena is probably not as powerful as you. Probably. Um, and she is, um, I guess w the best thing I could say is probably very resembles Arcane Trickster. Okay. 
So she doesn't have anything like Dimension Door? No. She's not very um, casty. Now, Dimension Door, you can go past a wall as long as, like, you don't have to see where you're going, right? Not as, it's better if I know, like, if I've seen where I'm heading, but I can assume, based right. off of, like, how Deacon described the compound <clears throat> to us and things, like, I could try to pop myself and Melanie into, like, you know, the main area, basically, at the very least. Right. It's possible that if we were to, to dimension door into the shrine room, that we could just open the door from the inside. Yeah, but I don't know how far down it is. And... Well, the door, in theory, is like, at, like a foot thick is exceedingly thick for a door. So just stand, like, right against the door, pop, like, two feet to the side doubtful that the roof would go down far enough for your head to go into it. I mean, even if there were stairs on the other side, you would probably just be in a stairwell. Yeah, but then again, it would just be two of us trapped on the other side of a door that we can't open. But we well, might be able to open it from that side, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. We can open any door we want, but it's noisy. Right. We we do have spells we could use. I mm. literally have a chime of opening. Oh. oh. <laughs> How I have noisy is with... that? Hey? How noisy is that? Is that like a, wow, like a knock spell? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do have pass without trace. Prepared. Can you Would use a chime of opening oh. work in silence? under silence? Yes. No. Well, if it can't Damn hear it. it, it can't. Damn. You should have just done it while you like went in the office, done it, and then left. <laughs> They would have just gone and opened. They would have just gone and locked it again. <laughs> oh, mm. Yeah. Damn, that's Not a if weird we got bird, guys. Up. This bird came in and opened all these doors. What the fuck? <laughs> it just screams like a, another sparrow comes and it just screams as Rain uses the chime of opening. <laughs> <laughs> We're all better on that twenty on that performance check. <laughs> um. Okay. Now pyrotechnics can make fireworks, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, it can. We could make some pretty stalling distractions if we needed to. I don't know pyrotechnics. Who knows pyrotechnics? I Tilda oh. knows pyrotechnics. Mm. I mean, I also have major illusion. <laughs> so, so just I mean, just gonna say, um, if you want a distraction, uh, I can turn into a huge creature. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can believe me. I can make a distraction. Um. Pretty convincing, very big distraction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I can, but I can do it without a spell slot. Uh, I don't mind using a. When, That's fair. I, I don't mind using a third level spell slot on that. Can turn into a giant constrictor snake. <laughs> oh, those are huge. Those are huge. It is huge. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, what are you guys going to be doing? What you should do is just go in as the uh, sparrow again, mm -hmm. go into the rafters and turn into a giant constrictor snake. Good God! I mean, I could turn into <laughs> that would be nightmare terrifying. Fuel. Yeah, exactly. I could, I could go in and I could turn into a giant elk. <laughs> It'd be like the deer in the car and Tommy Boy. <laughs> I think. Uh... Yeah, you ever seen a deer in an enclosed space? <laughs> Um, I think that we should... You said there was a bed in the office, wasn't there? Yes. Um, I'm assuming Rain comes back, describes everything she saw. So, the bed, did it look like it was, like, possibly the <laughs> bed that, um... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 like maybe, uh, five minutes. Exactly, exactly like that, but it's a huge creature. <laughs> yeah. Is it like, do you think that that's where Octi sleeps? Like, did it look like a used bed or did it look like just a random? Um, I mean, it, it was made. Okay, damn. I was hoping it was just like an extra cot that was there for decorative purposes. All right, so we can't go in at night. A decorative cot. 
Yes. The okay. thing. My okay. Sims houses are always very interesting looking. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> um, we learned something new. Um, <laughs> so, if we were to go in, we could... <laughs> We would need to go in when he's not there to get into the shrine room. We could get into the shrine room loudly. We could do a distraction and get into the shrine room. Uh, but so here's the thing. Do we want to get into the shrine room and then just like hope that we can take care of everything really quickly? Or do we want to try to sneak in there? And even after once we sneak in there, like, what is our plan? Well, are we going to try to talk to this Fey entity and see if it's there against its will? Are we going to try to just <laughs> dirt devil it up into the, <laughs> well, into here's the iron the flask like a dog on a date? What? Here, here, here's the thing. Uh, Fey are very tricky. Uh, regardless of whether this thing is what we ask this thing or not, unless we can make sure that it's not lying, then uh, we put it into the iron flask and that's it. If we can't put it in the iron flask, then I guess we just have to kill it. Um, because I don't want to release this thing and then it kill us and then everybody else. Oh, wait, speaking of, is there anything in the flask right now? No, there's nothing in the flask. Oh, okay, cool. Alexandria checked, it's empty. For some reason I was thinking there was something in it. Um... Alright, so... After we suck that thing into the flask, what then? I mean, everyone's gonna know something happened at that point. I guess we... Uh... It doesn't seem like Octi's around, necessarily. Um, I, I guess we either... He was probably in the shrine torturing a child. So what we really need to do is we need to make sure that we have a couple ways to incapacitate without harming uh, any children that happen to get pulled into the fray. And we need to basically take out Octi as quickly as possible before he can have too much damage come to the children. Is that correct? Elena says, I don't think Octi's here. He usually leaves the torturing to either he has a new right hand um, or it's probably one of the mem a couple of the members. Yeah, I think I think what we do <clears throat> Uh, we get everybody in the bag of holding. Bag of holding, sorry. Uh, we get everybody into the portable hole. Rain gets us in <clears throat> to Octi's office. Um, we uh. get... Everybody gets out. Um, check for magic and all that shit. And I think we cast Stone Shape, get that door out of the way, and just go in. Because I don't think we're going to necessarily have a way it'll be easy to get that crystal key off of uh, Gemma. When we when you do stone shape, how far can you move the item? Um, it doesn't really specify. So you touch a stone object of medium size or smaller. Here, I'll click it. <clears throat> Well, because I'm wondering, so you would have to cast it twice to sh to seal it shut behind us, mm -hmm. and then another time to get it out. That would be an that would be no, that would be terrible. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Um, I can entangle children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would work. I mean, I could well, just cast... Well, and it's probably a strength save, too, right? Children aren't small. Well, or aren't strong. Thinking... Or children aren't strong. Yeah, I was I thinking... I could also cast is... Wall of Force to keep children out. 
true. <laughs> and Tangle, box them in. I mean, they're not going to be able to break and Tangle easily because they're kids. They've got like a strength of what negative two probably. There's what just one real big beefy kid that's been working out since he was born. And they all roll natural twenties. No one kid, you know, it's going in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it also it also turns an area into difficult terrain. So. Yeah, that's handy too. Since yeah. it could make it harder to get it's, to us. If if we can get them out, get them outside, I can cast plant growth. Each child looks like that. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> I'm kidding. Jesus. I really that... hope that's Photoshop. No, no. his. Um... Yeah, no. He has a, th a thing that causes basically. He gets that kind of muscle almost without working out. <laughs> oh, that's well, just not fair. Well, fuck you. That would actually probably be <laughs> really bad child. for his plates, though. He's probably going to end up kind of short. Mm. Um, well. Alright, so or do we want to go in now? <sighs> Yeah, I say we go in now. Okay. But not okay. officially now, because it's midnight, but now in game time. Yeah, now in game yeah. time. We'll probably cut it here, and you well, guys... Well, we'll take a short rest so that yeah. uh, Bittersweet can get back the one. I mean, it, still, it might make a difference. It, it could still be useful, yeah. I mean, they could... If they get in the hole, they could just rest in the hole. Oh, no, it's uh, not going to take us a half an hour to get over gonna, there. Yeah, it's not going to take us an hour <laughs> to get over there. Well, we can take a short rest while we're kind of planning. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I'm just I'm just going to throw it out there if we can if there's any combat if we can take it outside, I can really fuck someone's day up with plant growth. What do, Wait, so could we have just waited until they were in the garden and plant growth everyone and then just like walk in with our yeah. Plant growth makes it so that uh um, unless like you can move max 20 feet per round if you're running. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, a creature moving through the area must... And this is a hundred foot radius. <laughs> a creature moving through the area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot it moves. Wow. But that affects us too, right? No, you can... You can uh, exclude one or more areas of any size within the spell's area from being affected. Oh. Hmm. Um, I think that going right down to the shrines are best bet, though. And then yeah. if if shit no, goes I was just saying if, it, if yeah if the combat we'll try happens, to go outside, go outside, yeah. Because though uh, it's possible, Gemma's already this... cast spell. If, Gemma's already cast fly. The says one uh, last for her. If this being is Fey, it also could possibly, if we have to fight it, if it can't go in the flask, we might not want to take it outside in case it has. Like cult lightning or something. I don't know. Probably. I mean, if we're gonna have to fight this thing, we're gonna kill it in the basement. So. Yeah. If it has call lightning. I w and we go outside. I'll summon that fay that just rides the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There's a. It's, I think it's a CR one or a CR two that mm. um it can travel along the path of any any lightning bolt. Hmm. Hmm. Cool. Okay. A lot of, lot of right. cool movies. Well, you got a lot of th things to think about next week. We do, mm -hmm. we do. All right. And we can also uh, plan. Okay, we uh, should plan two steps here, because we're fucking up by the first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I have major image, and I can make a really big, scary thing outside. I can make a how, fucking beholder. How far away does major image work? From where you are in the given it's, time. It's uh, 120 feet, I think. I've also got the uh, deck of illusions. Mm. Um, yep. That, if we want to save a spell slot, it is 100. Take our feet. chances. Oh yeah, we might get lucky and pull out a cloud giant. <laughs> or a red dragon. Or a red mm, dragon. That's one of those, I think. Yeah, I can make an adult red dragon with uh, major image. Nothing one to day, at. one day, I will get hallucinatory terrain. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for when I can eventually get it. It's like one of my favorite spells that I've never been able to use. Because it's just so crazy. Love okay. it. Okay, cool. All right, uh, everybody is everybody available uh, next week. Yeah, All should right. be. 
Cool. Oh wait, I'm thinking of Mirage Arcane. That it's a level seven spell. It's fucking yeah. insane. Kelly's Kelly's gonna be at work until like three a.m. So that sucks. Well, he normally gets home around two, but with it being the day after Valentine's Day and a Friday, well, they're yeah. probably gonna get they're probably gonna get smashed. They will, yeah. Mm, yeah. So uh, 